Hello everyone, how are you doing? I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday. I hope your weekend has been well. Mine's good. Dropped off uh, my cousin at the train station this morning. My uh, cousin was visiting for the weekend because my birthday is Tuesday, so that was fun. Good to see her. I haven't gotten to spend that much time with her in many years, so that was great. How's everyone doing? Hopefully well. Terra Dona, thank you for an 85 stream streak. That's probably, is that the longest streak we currently have? That's pretty bonkers. Thank you for that level of dedication. Or obsession, depending on what. <laughs> Seriously, though, thank you. Did I see NASA put out a TTRPG adventure? I didn't until you sent that link. Looks very interesting, and it seems to be free. So if you have kids and, like, tabletop RPGs, probably recommend. There's a link in the chat. Um, am I doing a stream Tuesday? You know it's my birthday. Yes, for those who don't know, I turned 30 on Tuesday. Not a fan of that. Um, I don't know if I'll be streaming. I, I don't know. I haven't decided. We'll see, I guess. I probably should stream. So let's say yes, tentatively. <laughs> tea time tea, thanks for 18 months, says so close to a second sub baby. No, that is a second sub baby. 918. That's two nine months. This second sub baby's name is. Pregolo Mansana. <laughs> oh. PK the Lost, thanks for 45 stream streaks, says happy early birthday, Hannah. Thank you very much. And, uh, cool. You can shower with well wishes. Yeah. Yeah. I also kind of just want to get high and watch movies that day, though. So, like, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Maybe I could... I could do a stream earlier in the day and then spend the rest of the day watching movies and eating snacks and maybe being high. We'll see. <laughs> uh, Dune 2! I haven't even seen Dune 1! I haven't seen the original Dune! Or the, the series, the mini-series. <sighs> anyway, so today we're talking about Hans Wormhat. We are doing a tinfoil spotlight, which is basically a video where we look at one particular conspiracy theorist um, and what they believe. Some of these we may have watched a long time ago. Some of them are new. Today we're looking at Hans Wormhat. What does Hans Wormhat believe? Why? Is there an overarching cosmology to the madness? There is. Uh, I know the question. It's rhetorical. It's a framing device for this stream. So let's go ahead and look into it. Um, and talk about why conspiracy theorists start to believe the things they do, why certain conspiracies are comorbid with one another, um, and, uh, you know, why he doesn't believe certain animals are real, amongst other things. So, oh yeah, he loves the AI. He loves the AI now. Lilac Rosenberg with 40 bits says, humiliation rituals, aka actors. I think I saw this. John Cena just took part in another humiliation ritual, and if you haven't seen it yet, I'm going to show you in this video exactly what I'm talking about. Is it going to be him in a dress or something, or is this when he was wearing heels? Warning, I will be talking about gender, so if you have gender dysphoria or just anything to do with gender, this is your trigger warning for it. Wait, she thinks that humiliation rituals are a thing regarding men wearing women's clothing for comedy or performance purposes, but is also okay with giving trigger warnings for gender issues? I'm very confused. That's different. Typically, if someone's the kind of person who considers men putting on traditionally women's clothing and they consider it a humiliation ritual, usually they're like right-wing conspiracy theorists that like hate trans people. So that's weird that she is both considering a man in women's clothing satanic or something, but at the same time being considerate of people's gender dysphoria. I've never seen that before. I'm going to cover this part with my David head. David so. Lynch Dune is spectacularly weird, and that's why I like it more. I do like David Lynch, so... Oh, this is clearly John Cena, okay? We all know this is John Cena. This is him in full wig, full makeup, full outfit. If you have gender, don't watch this. This is only for the agender homies. Overthought with 100 bits says, I see no one. Where is John Cena? She should have included him in the video at some point. I get it. It's the one joke about John Cena. 
Britney Spears. First red flag, I think if anybody is illustrating themselves as Britney Spears, that's immediately symbolizing and signaling something. We all know that she's in a conservatorship. Who knows if the girl's even alive at this point? Whoever is the persona controlling her Instagram right now, we all know that's not her. So that's the first red flag. We knew? Second. We know this that? This has nothing to do with- We know that? We have knowledge of that. Embracing a healthy mindset of, you know, healthy masculinity and embracing the feminine side within a masculine. This has nothing to do with that. This is straight up humiliation. If you guys- This is comedy drag. Like this is, this is like pantomime comedy drag. Like this is over the top comedy drag. This is not new. This is incredibly old. Watch this actual commercial, which I'm not even going to promote the movie. I don't want to say it. Don't want to give them any promo. This is strictly just to show you Holly weird, right? Holly weird. No. She's not in a conservatorship anymore. Oh, this video was posted a week ago. I guess I just assumed this was an old video. Yeah, she's wrong. She's not in a conservatorship. She got out of it. Hollywood, Holly weird. I'm in this industry. I go to many, many events. I see things like this. Not good ones, apparently. I've never heard of you so that's a burn against her terrible failed acting career please take it from my mouth <laughs> sorry that's vindictive i hate when people go on the internet and spread conspiracy theories for clout and i get the vibe that she doesn't necessarily actually believe this but she just wants views this feels very cynical the uh consideration for for people with gender dysphoria juxtaposed with with the humiliation ritual stuff makes me feel like it's bullshit and she doesn't believe this but she thinks it'll get her attention and help her career this is real here's another photo for reference you can tell that's clearly him full done in makeup it's you don't need, like why are why, why is she even treating this like they're trying they're not trying to hide that it's him in this movie he is cited it is on his imdb <laughs> or in the show or whatever it is i don't even know exo deadlock thanks for three stream streak says so this is a thing now i guess free are you free, John? Are you free? Hmm. To me, this screams the exact opposite of free, but okay. So like I said, I'm going to be talking about gender. So first things first, what I want you to know is in the Hollywood industry, anytime they're portraying a different gender on the actor, that is a level of control from directors, producers, whatever it is, who's ever in charge of that movie. The main goal is that these people in power want control over their actors and actresses because these are the people- I mean, with on- on film, like when they're shooting, they need to direct the performers like, hey, you know, more. I'm not a director. I used to be like, no, no, your motivation in this scene is uh, uh, you're, you're angry. Your mom killed Bustopher Jones. I don't know. Movie things, movie motivations. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> but like outside of that, I mean, no, I don't think they really give a shit. They don't own them. Huge platform. And who better to control and get the word out on a message than those with a huge platform that people are looking and watching their every single move. I want you guys to watch Cat Williams' interview on Club Oh, Shape. Cat Williams is a psycho. Cat Williams is terrible. Have you heard him talk about literally anything? He's the worst. Shay, go on YouTube, look up Club Shay Shay, and watch Cat Williams' interview. He exposes kind of the more black entertainment industry of the comedy side and the acting side, but humiliation rituals exist there too. As in, Cat all Williams of these is like incredibly homophobic and like, <laughs> like, has said very strange things about non-religious people. Not good. Black, very, very. He went on Rogan. I'm shocked. Joe Rogan had a terrible person on his show to spout nonsense? That never happens. Masculine looking guys having to portray different genders in movies and they fully do them up, right? And sometimes they don't even do them up well enough. You still know that that's a very masculine person. Behind. Well, in the case of John Cena, that's like part of the joke. Comedy, comedy drag or like comedy cross-dressing for like John Cena in that is intentionally amplifying the juxtaposition between the traditionally feminine like mini skirt pigtails thing and his traditionally masculine body that's like that's the comedy i'm not saying you need to agree with that because there's like arguably problematic elements with that if you're like a trans person like myself i get that but like it's not hard to understand why it exists. Like, it's a pretty basic concept, and it's existed for a long time. 
find that character. Okay, location change, I'm at home now. But this all goes to say that Holly Weird is all about controlling their actors and actresses. So please be aware of, you know, what platforms you're following, what messages you are getting, you know, fed every single day if you are checking on their profiles and stuff like that. These people are not worth looking at them at a higher pedestal than you you are of equal value so no this shit? is just something that is there is there someone out there who's like john cena's just like on another level than me as a human being once again the world is going to start slowly coming to the realization that this stuff is real and hollywood is i should explain the humiliation rituals thing for those who don't know because i know someone asked um, I know people aren't necessarily as into the vocabulary of it as I am. Humiliation rituals are a belief that within um, these conspiracy groups that they think exist, the Illuminati, the Freemasons, the Cabal, the Deep State, Satanists, whoever they think is in power, whatever they define the in-group that they are not a part of as, they think that there are ritualistic humiliation things. So think about, like, a fraternity at a college, right? Imagine being hazed as you're being brought into the fraternity. Um, maybe they make you do something humiliating in public. It's like that, but on a global Illuminati level scale where they think that they are doing sort of hazing ritual humiliation to certain famous individuals. And it's basically anything that they don't like. So um, if it's like, like John Cena in drag there, right? They don't like that. That makes them uncomfortable. So to them, that must be a humiliation ritual. Because why else would a man like John Cena ever wear that outfit for comedic purposes? Right? They don't like it. They don't understand it. Therefore, they have to give malevolent intent to it. <sighs> Alright. So, on to Hans. Hmm. What do we want to start with? Let's, you know what? Top 10 fake animals. That seems hat. perfect. Top 10 fake animals. If you've not been introduced to my coverage of Hans Worm Hat, this is a good overview of a major tenet of his worldview. Um, and that is he thinks that tons of animals are fake. He believes that if it is an animal that he has not personally witnessed in his environment, like a squirrel or something that might be around him, he doesn't think it exists. So let's look into it. He'll give hints as to why. We'll discuss it. Have some fun. This is a video. You can tell it's going to be fun because I keep saying verbally it's going to be fun, which definitely isn't um, an attempt to uh, 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 give you the vibe that there's fun when none exists. So on the top 10 fake animals. And so we'll start with 10. The anaconda. My anaconda you... don't. My anaconda don't. My anaconda don't exist because it's a psyop. You guys ever been to the zoo? Or, yes. Or I have been to multiple zoos. Some other place with, with reptiles, and they'll have these giant snakes that just sit there and they never move. Here's the fun thing about reptiles, is they are cold-blooded and therefore expending a bunch of extra energy that they don't need to probably isn't great like a big snake like this it's probably chilling under like a big heat lamp because that's kind of its thing other species don't move around like we do necessarily especially if they don't produce their own heat in their bodies that would be a waste of energy that they can only replenish by external sources it's just a fake snake and so many photos like this exist out there that are just ludicrous obvious cgi one of the big memes with the fake animals is they like to make things larger than life. It's part of movie magic. Have you ever heard how when people meet celebrities in real life, they're like, wow, I had no idea they were so short. And it's because movie magic, using angles, using movie magic, anything, CGI these days, they love to make things larger than life, blow them out of proportion, and sell you a story. The anaconda is one of those. I find that interesting Some... that he uses an example of something, and this is pretty common to conspiracy theories, the idea that there's some element of truth that they expand to the point of it being not true anymore. So what he's trying to say is, hey, the way that actors, actresses, who it is, a narrative that is being crafted through the film. So all you can ever do is sort of make projections of reality at best. Cool. 
But instead of recognizing that as kind of a nuanced understanding of how media works, he then decides that everything is fake. It's not just that some things are contorted, it's that everything is fake that's ever appeared in movies. Everything in movies is fake. There's snakes in movies, snakes are fake. Black and white ideology, very big for conspiracy theorists. Some of them are just mock-up fake fake reptiles. It's even a gag. You know how that's that's like one of the things that you can buy in a gag store, like fake fake snakes, a fake rep weird connections too. Like he's like snakes. I almost imagine conspiratorial you you could theoretically think of a conspiratorial mindset as a chart with different things on it like what is this called a chart where you have like a circle and in it might be like snakes and then off of snakes you'll be like gag shop snakes and you keep making associations it's like they're free associating on the idea until they get to a point that they can reasonably make a connection that they think sounds like it's in the form of an argument and they go that's an argument like it's like his brain went Snakes. Where are snakes? Snakes are in movies. Movies are fake. Where else are snakes? Snakes are in gag shops. Gag shops are gags. Gags are jokes. Snakes are jokes. It's a big joke. You know what I mean? It's like he's... It's not like he's he's thinking analytically as much as he is making... Vague, arbitrary mental connections between different ideas related to the topic and then attributing significance to those connections in regard to a conspiracy he's already decided exists. That makes sense. Fenakagami says, Hey Hannah, sorry, I don't think I can handle a whole stream of Hans gonna play Baldur's Gate with my friend. Okay, have fun. Rubber snake. So they just make these huge ones and put it in an aquarium type setting in a zoo or something. Take you in Terrarium. Terrarium. Into these dark cave area and it just doesn't move it just sits there because it's it's a rubber snake but you can see snakes move they do they might be sitting there when you're particularly looking at them but not all the time you can absolutely go to zoos or other places and see snakes move you can see snakes move the seriously if you look up anaconda this is what you get you get a bunch of stuff that looks like this they don't even try they it's funny they go over the top there are so many anaconda things that look exactly like this. J-Lo. Anaconda was a big movie. So another big thing with their fake their fake animals is they love, a big movie? they love to make movies. I genuinely don't know. Was that a big movie? That's a shame. 90s. What are you doing? About it. It's just the same way about how PSYOPs, they make them come to life by making a movie about it. Same thing with fake animals. Oh, make a movie about it. Anaconda was huge. This was one of the big movies. They sort of re reverse engineer this. They believe in a conspiracy theory. They find an old piece of media that they think relates to the conspiracy and then say, see, they were warning us all along. It's predictive programming. They're working backwards from the thing they already believe and going back to try and find things that they can claim were part of the conspiracy. Harold Elbleman says, We used to have guys who wore boa constrictors on segways on Bourbon Street until a very recent crackdown on street vendors as a part of the ongoing gentrification and disnification efforts around here. You could take pictures with them, handle them a little, wear them in a picture for a small fee. Watching them commute to work was always hilarious. I'm sorry, there was like a, a economy of, of people with snakes on segways? Like, like, you're making it sound like it's plural. Like, this is not a guy on a Segway with a snake. This is a fleet of snake peddling Segway people? We just live in Mad Libs. Life is just Mad Libs, but stupider. <laughs> Movies back in the day. J-Lo is the anaconda. Do you know? want to know what the anaconda is? Yeah, tell me what the... <laughs> nope. It's right here. That's the anaconda. Sorry. I'm kind of tired. I, I Sleep was interrupted this morning, like I said. Um, me, me and Baja had to take my, my cousin to the train station early this morning. So I'm a little loopy. I apologize for that. I apologize. This beast. J-Lo's anaconda. Oh, he's doing the transvestigation thing. No, J-Lo's not trans to our knowledge. 
Okay, nine. Nine on the list. I chose the shoe bill because this came out of nowhere. It's just a CGI creation. Isn't it weird to, I guess I, I, I almost let that slide because I'm so used to Hans being weird and obsessed with trans people, but I just realized it's very weird to suddenly be having a conversation about which animals you think are fake and then go, look at this secret cock. Like, that's weird, right? Like, yeah, I think snakes aren't real, bro. Also, have you seen J-Lo's cock? Like, that's a really weird place for your brain to go. He has got an obsession. And I'm not doing this in a, like, oh, he's gay way. No, I hate that trope. I just mean it's weird. Like, that's... Like, I don't think Sigmund Freud is right. I think he's full of shit. But I get how he got where he got. <laughs> I get how Freud got there, is what I'm saying, even though he's wrong. <laughs> there are some people who just, like, no, there are no cigars. Hans is an example where there are no cigars. There are only phalluses. Amber Pretzels says a snake that big uses a lot of energy to move about, so they're usually stationary out of general conservation. Any creature of large size uses more energy to move. We talked about this with the continents are giants guy. Yeah. And do you guys remember when the shoe bill first appeared on the scene? People in the comments would say that doesn't look real. It looks like CGI. That doesn't look like a real animal. It, do it does, though. It looks like the real animal. It is a real animal, but like... How does this look like CGI? It just looks like a bird. It looks like a cool burb. And I think some of them are puppets. Puppetry is a huge part of this fake animal thing. And you can go research fake animal puppets. Uh, Again, he does this backwards thing. There are puppets of animals. Therefore, any animal he wants to think isn't real is automatically a puppet. It's so interesting that he doesn't realize he's doing this. At no point is he trying to falsify his own claims. He is only on the search for anything he could hypothetically and then actually fold into his mythology with no regard for anything other than can he convince himself of this? Is it tenuously related enough that he can form a sentence that sort of makes sense internally? Chiba Hawk says, nature equals Muppets. This is known. True. Our Lord and Savior has, and always is going to be, Jim Henson. Stonecore Bell says, do you remember when shoe bills came on the scene? Hans, you finding out about something doesn't mean it just came on the scene. You don't know about, um, you just didn't know about it before. Look outside your own experience. You're not the whole world, Hans. Another big conspiracy thing. Very myopic worldview. If something is not something that they directly experience, it it becomes almost abstract to them. Like, they are in a bubble of their own experience and quite find it difficult to view things from other people's point of view or recognize their own thinking. Their metacognition is not very good, I guess is what I'm trying to say. They are bad at understanding their own mind as well as the minds of others and understanding the limitations of both and how your perspective is not reality for everyone. They are not very good at that, generally. The Aflac duck is... Oh god. This is about the... <laughs> this is about the... The, 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 the snakes? Where's the snakes? Where's the snakes? Dang it. I didn't see a single snake. <laughs> it's just a duck puff. I know you sent a thing about the other stuff too, which I didn't look at. What's going on with Saffron, the impounded opossum, the agency that seized him, won't say, uh, so someone's opossum got seized on the street too? Lame. Fucking lame. Up it and they touch it up with CGI. There's there's YouTube videos of uh, Komodo dragon puppets. Yeah, there. I don't talk about that in this video, but there's a lot of puppetry involved. But again, the existence of puppets of certain animals does not in any way imply all of those animals are puppets. Like, you can have a puppet of a dog. It doesn't mean all dogs are puppets. Like, this would be like saying it's the same to say I see what I eat. What I see is the same as I eat. I see what I eat. These are different things, fundamentally, unless you're the Mad Hatter. These days, a lot of CGI. 
So shoe bill is number nine on the list, fake animal. Number eight, I wanted to give something historical, the dodo bird. This didn't just start happening, these fake animals. They fake everything. They lie about everything. I don't know why animals are this, it's this sacred cow topic. And for me, it's a huge, it's a huge indication of if you're dealing with- I sent the wrong one. Thank you. There's the snake. How dare you? Stop taking people's snakes. With a gatekeeper or not if they're i do understand like if there's a city ordinance that got voted on and it's like hey you can't have like like snakes and shit on this street like come on then they should just be like hey you got to stop doing this and give them a ticket if they don't <laughs> but even that i find like really the tourist destination let them have their snakes i don't care they're willing to talk on maybe this. i'm too laissez-faire on snakes though maybe i'm the adam smith of snakes and that's not okay subject the fake animal thing i don't know why it's such a heavily gatekept topic because to me it's similar to the outer space stuff outer space lies i find it interesting that hans always defines people thinking he's kooky as gatekeeping he thinks the fact that other people aren't constantly talking about the things he believes is gatekeeping he thinks that when people are like what are you talking about that's gatekeeping it's not these are just not common beliefs but in that they're trying to sell you sell you stuff to take you away from God. I'll get to that in the end. And they're trying to mock the Bible, similar to the outer space stuff. But I don't this animal thing. He has a biblical scent. His I should say, he has a biblical he would describe his worldview as Bible centric, but of course the Bible becomes a proxy for whatever he wants to believe. So he will believe something and then find something in the Bible that backs that up. So he will say that he is, of course, deriving meaning from the Bible, and I'm sure there is a give and take there, but often it feels like he is coming up with what he wants to believe, or he believes what he believes, and then he projects that and finds something in the Bible that backs it up, even if he's misunderstanding what it's saying, which happens regularly. People don't want to admit that they've been duped, and gatekeepers really gatekeep this fake animal stuff. I, I don't know exactly why. They they like being in on the, the secret. They like being in on these inside jokes. So here is number seven. Giant anteaters are definitely a hoax. A winning entry from the Wildlife Photograph of the Year competition has been disqualified after it was discovered the photo was of a stuffed animal. What do you know? I remember this, Hans. It was stuffed, meaning... It was formerly alive and a real animal, but it had been taxidermied. Stuffed doesn't mean, like, a plushie. It doesn't mean, like, cauldron whole field here. It means it was stuffed as in taxidermied. A photograph of a taxidermy anteaters. All great anteaters like this, they're taxidermy or suits that act... What does he think? He doesn't know what taxidermy is. In order to have a taxidermied animal you need the living animal to start with or the corpse of a formerly living animal there's can go in a human can fit in the suit look at that it's like a no no they can't a cirque du soleil fake animal it's an actor look at this amazing shot five scientists all concluded the anteater was too similar to a tax taxidermy specimen notice how they love to their experts are the most amazing super smart they but have... if this was all part of a grand scheme, recognize that this does not make sense. Even though he thinks all scientists are in on some grand scheme, he also thinks that this hoax that was proven to be a hoax because scientists called it out for being a hoax is somehow proof that all scientists and everyone is in on this hoax. Now, obviously, that doesn't make sense. That's not even internally consistent, right? Why would they call out the thing that they are a part of faking? But it doesn't matter because in his head, even though it doesn't make sense, he's doing bad math in his brain. I am not mean literally, obviously. I just mean for whatever reason, his brain isn't understanding what he's doing, but it still comes to some sort of catharsis for him. So that's enough. It becomes evidence because it gives him the feeling of catharsis.
and that he is right. Incredible. Captain Squid says, I don't know why they do this. You're so close. <laughs> Five experts that could look at this and, and determine, no, that's too similar to a taxidermy version. What? <laughs> I think they just realized that... Because it's literally the same exact everything, Hans. It's literally the same exact everything. This was like over the top. Okay, this is over the top, obvious Photoshop. We can't, we're gonna... Not Photoshop, Hans. Taxidermy. He, you see how he like interchanges words? Anything that he thinks is fake is a puppet, is taxidermy, is CGI, is Photoshop. It cannot be all of these things simultaneously. But somehow it is in his head. It's fake. What he's trying to say is, this is fake, and he will use any words that come out of his brain that he thinks are affiliated with fake. Fraud. I don't know, and also they like to disclose. So this is just a form of disclosure. This right here is just total disclosure. They're telling you, taxidermy, fake animals. Okay, so number six on the list. Do you see where this is going? Rope climbing robots. Sloths are not real animals. They're animatronics. And people like David Attenborough are big phonies. They're actors. And the reason that they're... They're so acclaimed for their acting skills is because their ability to make it seem like they're taking it so serious. Their ability to sit in front of an animatronic and sell it like it's a real, living, breathing animal. That's why these these people get so so revered and <laughs> knighted and because they're big phony deceivers. Funny, cocaine dog man. Slaws are a big one. I mean, just look, that's CGI. You can just tell that's CGI. Sometimes I've What does he mean? you can just tell? That's so interesting. I find that to be one of the most frustrating conspiracy claims, is you can just tell. And not just because that's often also affiliated with transphobic conspiracy theories. But it's so lazy! You can tell because of the way it is. Hate it. Hate, hate, hate it. Hold on. You can tell because of the way it is. It's this vibe. It's this vibe. <laughs> Look at this. This is an aspen. You can tell that it's an aspen tree because of the way it is. Wow. <laughs> Just doesn't, doesn't help. Doesn't help. I've seen some sloth images that it's clearly someone like took a picture of their dog's face and put it in here and then they tell people it's a sloth they're both mammals so like there's you just mean that it's a furry face it's like he can recognize there's similarities between different species i wonder why look at that this is coming out of guinness world records life in the slow lane it just happens to be laying back like on a on a recliner or something it doesn't that's just so CGI. happen to be. That's a picture they chose. That is a specific picture they chose out of tons of pictures of sloths because to a human, it looks very anthropomorphic. It gives you the sense of its laziness. So if you're writing an article about it, you would use that picture because you're going, oh, this kind of looks like a lazy human. And we relate to that because we're, you know, humans. So let's show a sloth doing that in a picture for the article. And it gives the vibe of what we're trying to talk about. He somehow understands that. He sees that this is very human, but he doesn't understand that that's intentional. It's a photo that was taken that was just very lucky and cool that we go, collectively as humans, oh, my mirror neurons go burr. I can relate to that. So that's what makes it an impressive photo, is that it was just a moment in time that's very like, ooh, cool. But instead of recognizing that, he thinks it must be manufactured. Incredible. Hi, that's not a real animal. That's just an animatronic. Look how strange. It's a robot. It looks exactly like these robots. Look, it's like somebody took this. It and does not look exactly like those robots. Those robots don't have skin or any of the things that tend to go with skin. Put a skin over it. That's not a living animal. And why does it look so different? It looks so rigid. And it's a photo, Hans. One is laying down and one is not. And they're photos, so... And these ones are super smooth and curvy. It's because this... this one's CGI, and this one's a robot. 
they just have these robots that cling to things. Raquel is working from home. <laughs> Look at these tree climbing robots bringing us to number five on the list. Koalas. Are evidence of sloths existing, fun fact, predates robotics? <laughs> So, uh, just in case anyone needs to hear that. This was a big, viral, pushed video on YouTube, and you can clearly see it's CGI. That's not a real animal. This video is just... Clearly see. ...obvious CGI. And, yeah, koalas are a fake animal. That's why these look like really bad puppets. I just want to... <laughs> If I could say one thing, if I could talk to Hans, trying to explain ontology to him, I think might be, it would be incredibly difficult, but I want it so bad to be like, no, 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 no. Like, you need to, like, explain why you say you know this. You can't just say it's obvious you know it. You need to, like, give a basis. Explain yourself. It's made of wool. Can we start a rumor that Hans doesn't exist? He's obviously AI, that's why he sounds like a bad puppet. I'd rather not start rumors. I know you're joking, but I need to be clear for internet reasons. <laughs> Koalas are a bit, people from Australia gatekeep this so bad. They're, there's big time YouTube alleged truthers that they refuse to admit that, that these are just stuffed. Even though it's clear that they're stuff. Giving you the Again, it feels like to him gatekeeping is not talking about a thing that he believes. Even if you're unfamiliar with it as a concept. One eye. Koalas are a hoax. If you go look at photos of koalas, their their hands are just totally rigid. They don't grip objects. They just have like flat pancake hands. They do hand grip objects actually. Hands. Anyways, this video is more like about making the ob like they'll they'll grasp onto like a tree. Or, like, get some fucking eucalyptus. That's actually, they won't if it's on a plate. They're very dumb. Koalas are dumb, but they're cute. And they're real, so. This list, the top ten list. I don't want to get into any one specific thing too much. There was this this viral koalas in the car, and everybody could tell that they were stuffed. They are like, they're not moving. One of them, like, barely twitches, and everybody's like, no, 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 look at that one. It barely twitches. <laughs> they're all alive. Uh, that one just had a little bit of battery left, I guess. Enough to do a little ear twitch. But look, they're dead. They're Again, Hans, these are still photos. They're taxidermy. So I couldn't see motion if it if it is there. It's a photo. It's taxidermy. It's a big taxidermy hoax. I think we're... Are we already on number four? Does Hans think this is a common belief? Probably. He definitely thinks it's more common than it is, which is to say incredibly common or in uncommon. Sorry. Um, yeah, that's a pretty big thing with conspiracy theorists, is they will overestimate the number of people that believe the things they believe. I mean, I think people do that in general. That's a general bias. You kind of assume you're the center, no matter what. Like, even with the understanding of, of your own brain. On some level, you're always thinking you're right, because if you didn't, you wouldn't believe the things you believe, because you wouldn't believe they're right, so you wouldn't believe them, if that makes sense. So you always kind of put yourself at the center, and I think we all tend to overestimate the number of people who think the same as us. Not to say people are very different. People are different, but there are a lot of things in common. But what I am trying to say is, there are certain opinions that we all have that I'm sure we assume are more common than they actually are. <sighs> Penguins. The emperor penguins. The orange emperor penguins. The ones that they make movies about. The South Pole. Is it's not icy Antarctica. There's a lot of hoaxery when it comes to Antarctica, and emperor penguins. Emperor is thirty three, and they're animatronics. That's I why you don't. Means in some sort of gematria, it's thirty three, which is numerology. See emperor penguins in the zoo, which except for nowadays to the hiding secret messages stuff. Because they do, but they put them far in the back, or you'll just see a few CGI videos. We're not playing bingo. <laughs> Oops. But it would be Gematria. Hey, no justice, no peace. How's it going? Okay. Number two. Is this really number two? Maybe I lost track. Three. <laughs> great white sharks are a hoax. Just great That's why whites. they have to do Shark Week. You get a whole week to it. 
it's another one that they sold with the movie Jaws. They like to sell things with the movie. Anaconda movie, we get the Jaws movie. They don't survive in captivity. And you get so much obvious. This just reminds me exactly of those really bad Anaconda CGIs. Sharknado. I mean, that particular photo wasn't real because it was a great white shark doing a trick in SeaWorld. They have not had great white sharks at SeaWorld. Oh. I'm good. Dead Thanks eyes. No they have dead eyes because they're not alive. They're just little toys a lot of times. A lot of times they really do sell like a little rubber plastic toy as a real thing. Lar larger than life movie magic. That's what it's about. They take sharks. I have a bootleg Blahai around here somewhere I was going to grab, but I don't know where it is. Sharks, and they just make them larger than life. They'll use cinematic effects. They'll use special lenses. They use forced perspective, scary music. He's just listing movie things and saying that that's how they do it. But like, that's not how they do it because sharks are real. CGI submersibles you know for the jaws movie they made a, a mock-up submersible and it didn't work very well captain squid says life <laughs> lifeless eyes black eyes like a doll's eyes it's cgi when you just know that it's it's cgi you can you can tell you just know you just know it you just know it he feels it. He has a feeling. His feelings are facts, literally. There's so many photos of, of great whites. And a lot of them have expressions. Like As someone with anxiety who overthinks things, people who are this conspiratorial or think this, let's call it intuitively, they put a lot of weight on their intuition, scares the shit out of me. Like, how do you not, how do you not second guess yourself about everything you believe every day, constantly, forever, and you believe the stupidest things? <laughs> it's incredible. Look at that. It's like a snarling smile expressions. It, it, they can give them expressions because it's just Photoshop. One little topic. I don't want to spend... How do I suss out CGI? I, I don't. I'm not an authority on that. <laughs> too long on great whites but a big hoax is going out to do a great white shark dive and if you read reviews i mean nowadays i've seen it's it's been fluffed up with fake reviews like you know how reviews nowadays you can't look up reviews of anything without getting a ton of fake reviews but if you he works backwards in such a way that even evidence against what he believes becomes evidence for his belief so to you or i if we somehow had this belief and then we went to see a bunch of positive reviews about shark, you know, experiences. And we were able to look at the accounts and see they didn't look like bots and it looked like, you know, whatever. You could investigate. But they seem like legit reviews. You or I would take that as, oh, well, that doesn't work for my belief. That kind of goes against what I believe because these people have seen this. They've been up and close and they, you know, think it's real. They don't seem to have any suspicions or anything. But to him... What is important isn't evidence. It's not falsification or inquisitive, like, investigation. He's never trying to falsify himself. At every turn, at every juncture, every event or thing he finds is an opportunity to further reinforce the belief. So the reviews that are positive to him are... No, that's just proof that they're trying to psyop everyone. Why would all these fake positive reviews be here if they weren't trying to trick people? Now, that's illogical, because of course that's circular. He's starting with the assumption that it's fake in the first place without good justification and going from there. But he doesn't see that he's doing that at all. You go and you search these shark encounter reviews, you get a lot of people saying that they, they don't see any sharks, they don't see great white sharks. I picked this one because it was just interesting. They they made up this excuse. Killer whales had apparently eaten several great whites in the weeks leading up to this, so sharks had only recently returned to the area. They talk about Shark Alley, but don't go there. They say the big sharks stay off the continental shelf. Well, if you watch Shark Week on Discovery, you know that's a bunch of crap. Well... <laughs> Yeah, Discovery Channel. You're watching TV. 
If that's true, that Shark Alley, you can see it from the... Okay, whatever. They say sharks are afraid of scuba gear. They make up a bunch of excuses why you're not going to see great whites. I guess that's a big, a big thing they've been telling people. See, to me, I'm thinking from the perspective of Hans, if I was seeing negative reviews, I'd be like, why are these people giving negative reviews if the experience is entirely manufactured? Wouldn't every experience at least involve seeing a decent number of sharks? Because if they were faking it, the experience would be consistent, right? I think about, like, some things that are actual, like, psyops. So, like, I have an interest in uh, North Korea. North Korea is really interesting um, because a lot of the society is built on fictions. Don't get me wrong, every society is built on fictions, but the fictions in North Korea are quite overt, right? Um, so I find all that very interesting. And when North Korea brings tourists to North Korea, there is a set tour that they go on where they are seeing specific things, right? Where they are seeing basically set up fake scenarios, right? And I've seen several documentaries go through this same tour. Several YouTubers go through this same tour. And it's pretty consistent every single time. They go to the same locations, you know? The same things are happening. That's what it looks like if a government or someone is actually trying to trick you. It is a consistent, catered, curated experience. So why, if sharks were fake, would the experience be so hit or miss? Sometimes you see sharks, sometimes you don't. That's not a successful, like, propaganda campaign, right? It's just very, very strange. Well, is that the orcas are keeping the great whites away? The people that talk about how amazing it was that they saw great whites, they're going to be throwing hand signs. You're surrounded by a bunch of phonies. You've been punked. Company boasts of experimenting on us with fake viral videos. They admit it. They're fake. Okay, two. Now I'm back on the numbering, I think. Number two, fake animal pandas. It's the poster child of the WWF. WWF, it's fake, just like the World Wrestling Federation. The WWF is the World Wildlife Foundation, for those who don't know. It's kind of a truth in plain sight, them doing that name change. See what I mean about the connections? WWF, World Wildlife Foundation. That's the same acronym that was used for the Worldwide Wrestling uh, Federation. Oh my god, wrestling's fake, therefore animals are fake. You see how it's just like... It's just run-on sentences of, like, word vomit, just connections, just making arbitrary connections and writing stories. The WWF is about as real as wrestling. And this, I just want to talk again, this animal thing. It's like a, a no-touch no topic for a lot of truthers, which shows you that they're gatekeepers. Why, why is this aspect of society... Oh no, this is true. There's no deception here. Nobody lies about animals. How could anybody claim that? But it's just, it's a topic that people haven't thought about before. It's a topic that not many people talk about. So, but they're clearly gatekeeping it because there's people out there that they, they talk about all sorts of deception. They can talk about how outer space is clearly fake. They can talk about how NASA is clearly seen. So the fact that there are flat earthers and other conspiracy theorists out there that are open about the fact that they are into flat earth and stuff, but presumably don't believe this stuff, the fact that they're not talking about it to Hans is not an indication that they just have not heard of this conspiracy or don't believe it. To him, it is evidence that they are actively aware that this conspiracy exists, think it's true, and are hiding it. Again... He has a trouble understanding the motivations of other people. The problem of other minds for him is more difficult than the average person, it feels like. He has a very hard time seeing other people's actions and deciphering motivations. CGI, but then you bring up this animal thing. Oh, no, no, you're crazy. You're crazy. And it just shows you that they're gatekeepers. Why Why is this one topic where, oh, everything that they tell you about animals is true? No, everything is a lie. Everything is a deception. Everything on the TV is fake. Dude, perfect panda. Look, they're making, they're mocking. 
It's just that this one is over the top. They take something like this. There is a suit of a panda, therefore all pandas are suits. This, they make it a little bit more believable, and then they sell it to you as a real animal. But look, they're showing you that they're suits. Look at the history of the giant panda. It begins in the late 1800s. It's a mall. I assure you, the history of the giant panda began long before 1869. Modern hope. I think you mean... Europeans knowing about great <laughs> giant pandas. Oh. The royalty. Eurocentrism wins again, you fucks. You know, presidents, stuff like that. We Royalty today is hidden in these things like presidents. Really, they're just puppets, but, you know, famous, notice how this, this pandemic thing we have going on, how many famous people get it. It's because it's like a joke, an in-joke for, you know, royals are going to be the ones that hunt a panda because they know it's fake. They're the ones making the fake suits. They're the ones in control of this media with the fake stuff. So they are going to be the ones that kill pandas. It's not going to just be some, you know, bunch of rando Chinese, poor Chinese people that hunt pandas. No, it's it's the Roosevelt's that hunt pandas. Oh, there's a lot to unpack there. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not feeling like unpacking that today. Huh. Why were great pan giant pandas largely excluded from historical Chinese culture and arts? Because it's a modern hoax. It says largely, not exclusively, Hans. Look or entirely. How you can just tell that this is a person in a suit. This is straight out of the Toronto Zoo. Giant panda gives birth. Whatever happened to Coach Red Pill? He's dead. You didn't hear? Coach Red Pill fucking died. Yeah, he's dead. I remind you that Twitch TOS says you are not allowed to celebrate people's death. Warning. <laughs> Somebody just sent me this, and you can tell it's a suit. Look at the neck. The neck region. And just the back. The It's just somebody laying in a suit. It's just a good-looking mascot. They, they probably recruit these people from big-time Illuminati high schools, people who are mascots. Probably... Illuminati high schools. Holy shit. Okay, CW, I have the new hit for the fall season. Illuminati high school. Oh my god. Chad is so hot. Did you hear his dad is in charge of the PSYOP division? To get recruited. I'd watch that. To be... Th Seriously, though, he also said that he thinks that, um... <laughs> he is of the opinion that the mascots from the Illuminati High School are the pandas. All right. So their career path as a professional furry was kind of set up since at least high school that's must be nice to know what you're gonna do for a living huh must be nice to feel you have a purpose <laughs> um mabrett thanks for 26 months these Much giant pandas and lastly okay top number one fake animal it's kind of cheating because it's many many animals the great apes are all a hoax they are humans. And you are a great ape, Hans. I am a great ape. Homo sapiens, aka human beings, are great apes. In fursuits, and it's clearly satanic deception to make people believe in evolution and to think that they're a monkey. I liken this to NASA outer space. Motivated thinking. He's a biblical creationist. When the world doesn't conform to his beliefs, he doesn't change his beliefs. He changes the world, or at least he mentally deludes himself into thinking the world is different than what it is. Spaceland, if you have the discernment to be able to tell that NASA's BS, you absolutely should have the discernment to be able to tell that gorilla. Do you think Grizzly Man was faked? I don't know. Was actually are people no. in suits, and that all of these. Sorry, Werner Herzog is a hilarious person to me. I respect him. His films are incredible. I fucking love Grizzly Man. Um. But just the way he, he he talks about certain things is hilarious to me. Like, like, 
I know this is a serious moment in the movie, too, but literally Werner Herzog, when he's, like, listening to the, the audio of um the guy in Grizzly Man being mauled by the bear, and then he just takes it off and, like, says in a monotone to, like, the mother, you must never play this, you must destroy this. Like, it's hilarious to me, I crack up. Which is terrible, because it's, like, a really fucking scary, like, moment, and it's it's genuinely, like, somber and sad and scary. But goddamn, just his consistency and his, like, steady, like, like, vibe adds this level of weird surreal to the top of it. Him thinking the baby Yoda is a real baby, right? They said they were going to do CGI on Baby Yoda, and he apparently called them cowards, which is incredible. I love Werner Herzog. Unless he did something terrible, in which case, whoopsie. These great apes are just like NASA's there to sell you the outer space fantasy. Great apes are here to sell you the evolution fantasy, to make people believe that they are monkeys. People believe it. People really believe that. And the reason that they believe that is this great ape hoax. Their fursuits... Orangutans, they're orange. Orange is 33. They're just really, really nice fursuits. This is why there are thousands upon thousands of... The significance, by the way, is orange he believes to be a Freemason color because in Gematria, orange equals 33. 33 is the highest level of Freemason you can become. Therefore, he thinks 33 and orange indicate Freemasonry, which he thinks is a front for the Illuminati. Studio quality photos. Sorry about that. Missed some bits. Uh, Peep Lord said, The fuck did he die of? Did he get saturated with divorce particles? No, I believe he died of pneumonia in a Ukrainian prison after he got arrested um, for trying to flee the country after being arrested and warned multiple times to stop spreading Russian propaganda while literally living in Ukraine. If you just go look... Herzog was in The Mandalorian. Yeah. Look into... He was the guy that originally play, paid uh, Mando to go um, get the baby. Orangutans. I know Baby Yoda's name is Grogu, but I really hate that. I really hate that name, so I'm just going to call him Baby Yoda. You will find thousands of studio-quality photos of these perfectly clean, alleged wild animals. And it's... Again, Hans, animals don't want to go around being super disgusting. Like, I get it. There are certainly animals that have varying levels of comfortability with their own filth. But, like, we are very closely related to these animals. They don't want to be filthy. Like, animals, even animals that aren't particularly intelligent by human standards, will shit in the corner. You know what I mean? They have a designated area where they know, like, waste should go, and they don't want to become covered in their own filth, because evolutionarily, that's not a good survival strategy. So the ones that were less likely to want to be wallowing in their own filth survived most of the time. Funny how that works. Moss Sloth says, does this mean Hans thinks that all gingers are born to be Freemasons? I don't know. That sounds funny, but also he's said weirder things, so... Do I have the list of signs and symbols? I do. I'll pull it up in a sec, because we haven't looked in a while. Teradona says, I'm surprised Hans hasn't been subjected to his own transvestigation. Um, he doesn't show his face or body or anything, so that's usually what, what the transvestigator people, like, focus in on. So, he's probably safe from that. Okay, here's a list of symbols and signs that various conspiracy theorists throughout the years have said... If you see this, it automatically means whatever you're watching was produced by the Cabal, Freemason, Illuminati people. Orange, the number 33, butterflies, the sun, five-pointed stars, pyramids, eyes, the colors blue and gold, the colors black and white, covering one eye, the rock on hand symbol, you know, like, woo, rock on! Crowns, spirals, poop or butt jokes, zigzags, the moon, magic circles... I, I, I can't be more specific than that. Magic circles. Shakespeare, Freemason stairs, um, diamonds, big cat print clothing. Like, if you have an aunt that likes tiger print clothes, she's part of the Freemasons. 
Lightning, Saturn, cages, pizza, backwards words, masks, arches, Christmas in July being mentioned, spoons, heart symbols, peace signs, red shoes, the number 666, pine cones, tiny cars, the colors red and blue together, baths, winking, chess pieces, brick walls, backward ladders, owls, baseball, and triangles. So just make a movie without any of those things and you're good. <laughs> uh, People Lord says, isn't there a Victorian era palace made out of any, without any bathrooms? So the nobility all took turds out of their pantaloons. But what are you talking about? What? Where they, nobility took turds out of their pantaloons behind curtains. What are you talking about? <laughs> It's just, some of them are over the top. I have a lot of videos about these, so that's, I don't want to talk too much about it. But they take hair weaves and they make a fursuit out of it. That's and it looks so different. Not good to say. They give, they give the orangutans a lot of different, like, human haircuts. A big way that you can tell that these things are hoaxes is if you go back in time. You go back in time, these people clearly know how to draw okay, and- No, they don't! Look at that picture! I mean, don't get me wrong, for the time, it's fine. But no, this is not a good anatomically correct depiction of a fucking monkey. It just looks totally- Depending on the kind of monkey, obviously, but if it's an ape, that's not great. Different. The man of the woods, it looks like a little pygmy creature. It looks nothing like what they sell us as orangutans. Same thing about gorillas. If you go look at old pictures of gorillas, they look nothing like what they, they do today. And old gorilla suits are garbage. They're really obviously fake. Super shiny, plasticky looking, rubbery things. Coco the gorilla is just really obviously a suit. Coco's not a suit, but Coco is kind of bullshit. Orangut That's a topic for another day. Mr. Blast, thanks for 200 bits. Bits kicks off a hype train. Hell yeah. Pan. Chat, it's my last two days of being in my 20s. If there's any time for hype trains, this is it. This is my one time of year I will be shameless. That's not true. Subathons also. <laughs> is a truth in plain sight. It's a man of the forest. And they love talking about in the media about... I just showed a video where... He used the same drawing for an orangutan and a gorilla. That makes sense. The the big, I don't know, reveal was that they showed a mirror when talking about orangutans and who the beast was. The beast is us. Orangutans are people of the forest. They're people. They love to come out with stories about how they're just like people. They're just like people. Unstable Deadbeat, thanks for gifting five tier one subs. They are some of our closest relatives, yes. They, they have intelligence, like not on the level of a human being, but they are aware of themselves and the environment and like that they live in and other creatures around them they feel emotions and pain they have family groups like they are human in that sense they are they are worthy of like hey have respect for this being's life but they aren't literally human beings they are just sapient sentient beings on this planet that you should respect and not want to see harmed People are, as I'm talking about, um, out animals and people just shitting in the co Wait. French palace had no toilets until the 18th century. That doesn't mean they shit in the, the fucking corner. What? People in the past used, um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Cesspit? Some of them used cesspits. Some of them used, um, things that got emptied by servants, the name of which I'm thinking of. Chamber pots, thank you. Chamber pots. Chamber pots were common, and the servants would empty them. Thank you. They are people. They literally are people. They're just actors in a fursuit. This is straight off of Wikipedia, and look at this. There is a human finger right there. Hans, that's not a human finger. Why would you think that's a human finger? That is a human finger. If they were wearing a suit, that isn't even where their finger would be. Finger, because it's a person in... 
Rick M, thanks for a five month streak, says I am the wall or five stream streak rather, I am the Walrus. Cuckoo could chew. Oh, sorry, Bittergrin. Bittergrin said, um, welcome to old age. Wah ha ha ha. I'm disgusted by An myself. Elaborate monkey suit. It's Cirque du Soleil type stuff. There's a meme about gorillas. Gorilla suits are another big meme. There was a gorilla suit up on the ISS. And by up on the ISS, I mean down under, uh, underwater in the ISS, because that's the only place it is, in a pool. There is Gotta love the space is fake stuff. Nemesaur, thank you for gifting 10 tier 1 subs. Appreciate it. There's no outer space. There's a meme of dicks out for Haram, because... <laughs> It's just a known thing. Gorillas don't have penises. They they do have penises. I promise you. Gorillas have penises. They just retract up into their body. A lot of mammals do that. They just didn't make them. I don't know. They didn't want to make the suits with penises back in the day. So now they just had to run with it. Someone hasn't seen Suburban Sasquatch. If you just go start looking for gorilla suit stuff, though, you'll see. You'll see. Again, yes, gorilla suits do exist. That does not mean all gorillas are gorilla suits. Steve with a Q with 41 months says, found a handy pronunciation guide for you. I swear to God, whenever people are talking about blow high, they always pronounce it so weird. Blah ha. That's not a word. That's not blow high. Blow high means blue shark. Blow high. God, learn Swedish, people. Blow high. I'll do my best. Thanks, whoever that was. See. <laughs> That's the same thing. It's the same thing at the zoo. Doing a hand sign there. It's the same thing as the zoo. It's the same thing on the gorilla channel. It's the same thing when you watch Coco. Coco the gorilla is an actor in a suit. Fooling you. Don't be deceived. That's creepy. Animatronic gorilla head. You, yeah, you googled that, Hans. You googled that. It's not <laughs> Guys, check this out. I googled animatronic gorilla head and a bunch of animatronic gorilla heads came up. Isn't that proof that gorillas are fake? No! Your feelings do not extrapolate to other people like that! Animatronic gorilla head. If people saw this at the zoo... Side note, I am animatronic. I am actually hanimatronic. So. They would think that that's real because... Are Hans's videos popular? A decent number. This actually has 22,000 views. He has more than a decent number of conspiracy theorists. He has an audience. Disclosing. This is exactly the type of thing at the zoo. You're watching gorilla actors with deluxe animatronic gorilla faces on. Overthought. Thanks for gifting a look sub. At this. These are better than the one. Go look at old gorilla stuff and they pale in comparison. And that's not how real animals work, right? Squirrels, 100 years ago didn't look didn't look Speaking like Speaking of animatronics, look at my copy of Rock of Fire Explosion, a movie about people obsessed with the band the animatronic band from um Why am I blanking? The pizza place that Chuck e. Chuck E Cheese became because they bought Chuck E Cheese but kept the Chuck E Cheese branding. Showbiz Pizza. It's about people who are obsessed with the the Rock of Fire Explosion. I'm excited to watch that. They were falling apart and made of rubber. <laughs> Anyways, actors. Gorilla actors. Arm extension crutches. You have no idea how often people will come in. Their body proportions are wrong. Look how look how long their arms are. Yeah, they're using crutches. I explained that one before. It's all out there. They've Hans, disclosed it. They have articulable hands, too. In movies and performances where they have those stilts, the hands aren't super articulate. Artic artic articulable? Orangutans, a lot of times, are just CGI today, probably. The gorilla who walks upright. No, it's an actor in a fursuit. In ten years, if we're still around, which I don't know. It... People order with a link that says feces and urine were everywhere. I, I don't need to hear about all the shitting. <laughs> You're very intent on, like, getting this into the stream today. It, it feels like this place is falling apart. I don't care where people in Versailles pissed and shit. Hot take too fast for there to be 10 years from now but who knows one day they'll have these unstable deadbeat says showbiz pizza the combination of pizza showbiz and animatronics must be a field day for conspiracy theorists yeah i guess i haven't thought about it 
Janerdy says, I googled why Star Trek V is better than Star Trek, and Google agreed, so it must be true. 30 seconds on the hype train. Gorillas building huts and uh, making building campfires, and they've really gone off the deep end with this. This gorilla selfie was really big mocking. People could tell. People could tell that this gorilla selfie, it's people in suits. That's all that gorillas are. They're all people in suits. That's it. That's the top 10. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm just going to end with some honorable mentions. So there's Chef all Lord, sorts of tips. fake animals. People are, I get this question all the time. That's why I made this video. People are like, well, list off all the fake. You literally cannot sit here and list off the fake animal because just like there's people whose job it is to make up fake NASA stuff every day, there are people who their job is to make up Thank these the fake train. animals, to Photoshop fake animals. The proboscis monkey is a good one, honorable mention, because they literally use, it's like they f take a Photoshop of someone's ball sack and make a monkey out of it. What does Hans's ball sack look like? Like, I don't really, like, I don't have a personal interest, but now I have a medical concern for his scrotum? Um, hats off. What would you like me to wear for the hats off, Peep Lord? It's a big joke. Oh, no. I'm going to be punished for not caring about the shitting. Oh. I can feel it. <clears throat> How do these animals appear out of nowhere that nobody's ever heard of? When I was a child, nobody had ever heard of a proboscis monkey. But now we get all these... You hadn't heard of it, Hans. You hadn't heard of it. Same studio quality things that just look like... It looks like Photoshop or a taxidermy joke. And I'm telling you, they take they take ball sack photos and Photoshop it because they think that's a, a joke. They think it's funny. Hans is literally the scene in Always Sunny where um <laughs> where Mac is in therapy and he picks up a pen and goes, Oh, you think this is funny? You put this here with this pen, so I'd think, well that looks like a dick. He's literally that scene. <laughs> A hard hat, because you need to understand the animal qualities. The animal qualities of European mobility. Whatever you say, I'll get a goddamn hard hat. One sec. Uh. Sometimes the Lord gives you your hardest challenges. Sometimes he gives you his hardest hat. Echidnas are an honorable mention. Just read, read this ludicrous statement. He's going to talk about their penises. He's going to talk about their penises. He's going to talk about their penises. Down here. It's the same thing as the jackalope. Jungle. There are many. It's the... I should have put the duck-billed platypus in here. I'll just say it right here. That's another fake animal. The duck-billed platypus. That's a big... That probably should have made the top ten list. But, you know, can't you remember everything. It. Uh, that's what I mean. Your you can't sit here and list them all. There's too many fake animals. But read this. Spines like a porcupine, a beak like a bird, a pouch like a kangaroo, and lays eggs like a reptile. And because they told it to you on the TV, you believed it. Pangolins are another fake animal. It's... They love to mix their hoaxes together. Pangolins are a mixed hoax with this current thing. They they said that this current thing was from a, a pangolin. First it was about bats. Then it was, no, pangolins and bats. And they can make up whatever they want. This type of toucan is a fake. It's a prosthetic beak. And there's a lot of jokes about it like that. They make, there is a real bird with a Hydrate. large beak in Costa Rica, but they like to make it larger than life. It's just another larger than life thing. Giant squids. Giant squids, fake animal. You know what's funny? If we hadn't discovered that giant squids were real, that was like in the last, what, 20, 30 years we actually discovered that for the first time. I guarantee he would have been like, they're real. <laughs> if the general consensus was the opposite, that giant squids were not real, he would say the opposite. He would be like, they're real. It's this sea monsters of the deep thing. Fishermen have been lying about the size fish they catch forever. Fishtails. It's a fishtail. 
Anyways, I think I've said enough. The reason that they make these lies is to mock Noah's Ark. How could Noah possibly fit these millions and millions and millions of species? Well, it turns out millions and millions and millions of species is a BS lie that BBC and PBS told you, and Nat Geo or whatever. There aren't millions and millions and millions of species. There's not that many species, and there's you enough... You did it. He just said it, so it's true. Genurdy says only a fool would trust a naturalist who works in the wild. Hans has the ultimate weapons. Google and a severe case of incredulity. Touche, National Geographic. To fit on the ark. Evolution is fake. You didn't come from a monkey. Great apes are actors in fursuits. This is the reason, which to me, it's as obvious as the outer... Sp One sec. We're back. Okay. Sorry about that. Space lie. They they make the outer space lie to make you believe in a fantasy where where God isn't real. That's what they want you to believe. In a fantasy where you don't need God. And that's the same thing with the monkey. They're they're selling you a fake creation story. And if you can see the deception of the fursuits, you see it. See it for what it is. Praise God. God created all the animals. And God made man in his image. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And I forgot to mention zebras. They're painted that way. It's not really a, it's a real living horse or a mule or whatever. In this case, it looks like a horse, but they're painted that way. Black and white duality. You live in an illusion. It's a Barnum and Bailey world, just as phony as it can be, but it wouldn't be if if you believed in me. That's how their magic works. They get you to believe in it. And that's the only reason it's real. God bless everyone. I like that you just threw that last one in at the end. Oh, by the way, zebras aren't real. Hans Worm Hat, this is a hoax I haven't talked about in a long time. People don't really climb Mount Everest. They don't. They lie about it. And it's actually a really, really recent lie. People, even I, thought that this would have been something that they claim happened in the 1800s. No, 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 this is really recent that they claim this happened. From Reddit. 1953, Edmund Hillary or Hillary Edmund and Tenzig Norgay. Everything has to include his transvestigation somehow. Weird intrusive thoughts on his part. Were the first human beings to ever reach the summit of Mount Everest. This is the only proof. It is a photo that Hillary took of Norgay with his axe. Norgay offered to take one of Hillary, but he declined. They stayed at the summit for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, they got their 15 minutes of fame. Do you notice anything wrong with this photo? Clean. Why are so clean? It's the top of a mountain no human had ever been on before. What are you talking about? You're telling me that somebody made it all the way to the top of Mount Everest and they don't have a speck of snow on them. No frost. What? It wasn't snowing when they got up there. What are you talking about? They probably went, we're about to take a photo. <laughs> oh my God, what is he talking about? It's just a staged photo. They, they do this foreground, background thing all the time. You're looking at some mocked up fake summit on the bottom with the actor, and then they just put a large panoramic mountain range it's like because the there is snow at the top of mount everest in his brain he thinks it must always be snowing very hard on mount everest which is not the case background two photos combined and they make sure their symbolism gets in there there's a perfect triangle right here for the pyramid i mean what do you mean a perfect triangle it's 
It's kind of looks like three sides between his legs and the mountain. But, like, it's certainly not a perfect triangle. The mountain part is curved. They're not straight lines, Hans. But look how clean. So clean. And it doesn't even look that well insulated. His crotch? That's what drew Hans's attention. And it's just fake. You're, everything that you get presented is fake. They want you to think that they've been to the bottom of the ocean. They've, they want you to think that they've already climbed the top of the mountain. Not only that, that they've climbed to the, the tallest mountain. Hans, you can literally go climb Mount Everest today if you haven't... Well, it takes time. You could get the ball rolling on it today if you had the money, is what I'm trying to say. Um, people do it all the time. It's like a rich people thing. Like, rich people do that shit. It's embarrassing. I've seen plenty of pictures of it. Captain Squid says, If everything that gets presented is fake, is this video fake? Yes, it's fakeception. They want you to think that a million people do it. Oh, they it's do. super common. I don't but know exactly how many have gone, but it is a tourist industry, and it's really fucked up because people throw garbage all over the goddamn mountain. They... It's, same, it's the same thing with all everything. Their MO, it transcends all aspects of society. Uh, this reminds me of free people that claim to be these amazing free climbers. Oh, I free climbed El Capitan. You watch a documentary, it's just a bunch of emotional garbage. I saw that documentary. Good documentary. Interesting documentary. But apparently Hans watched it and got upset about the emotional parts. That's unhealthy. <laughs> and quick cinematic clips. They never show you start to finish. Some Hans, it took the guy like days and days to climb the mountain in the thing they show it. He has to literally, like, camp out on the side of the goddamn mountain with a tent. I shit you not, it's a tent that, like, you use, uh, are they called pythons? Pythons, I think. And actually, like, kind of, like, secure the tent that you lay in to the wall, to the side of the mountain, because it's, like, a sheer vertical surface. So they have to, like, literally nail a bed into the wall in a tent. It's horrifying. It was a good documentary, would recommend. But apparently Hans just decided that it should be a time lapse of him climbing the mountain for days, which would be boring. Somebody free climbing. I mean, it might be interesting, but I think the, the his motivations and the tense anxiety of the whole situation is like, that's the draw, is the human part of the story. El Capitan. You get a really emotional story, and you get some clips here and there. And it's because it's just fake. You're living in a fake reality. Masons love selling you a story, telling big tales. Free Martins will lie to you about the size of a fish they caught. What do you think is stopping people from outrageous claims like this? Oh, I'm the first one to climb up Mount Everest. I don't have a speck of snow on me. I think I explained that enough. You can tell it's an old photo because there are not an, a lot of people lined up for a shot. That's a lie that they tell you. Oh, there's so many people climbing up Mount Everest. It's just a continuation of this lie. They just want you to think that... Not a lie. It's a common thing. Do you know anybody that claims to go up to Mount Everest? I don't have wealthy friends and it costs like tens of thousands of dollars on top of the training you have to do, on top of... The travel expenses and the time you have to take off, like, no, I don't have friends that are, like, obscenely wealthy, so no, I don't know anyone who has done that personally, but you can find plenty of people online, you can find their vlogs and their videos and everything about doing that. I'm sure there are multiple documentaries about it, like, you could go and see plenty of evidence of this. Everest. You can investigate the companies that do this and provide, like, Sherpas and stuff for the experience, like... You could investigate this, Hans, but he's not interested in actual investigation or falsification of his claims. He's interested in mentally masturbating. He's interested in going online and reinforcing everything he already believes. And that's pretty much it. It's, it's, it's just masturbatory. Only really rich trannies. The only ones that I know are like dentists, where they have a photo. They get a photo, like a plaque on the wall. Went to base camp.
It's ironic that a dentist got a plaque as a reward. Are you laughing yet? And they probably just, they're, they're telling you a story. When they probably climb to a certain point and then the Sherpas just say, okay, well, this is as far as we go and we're gonna turn around now. And the people, um, I mean, if they even make it that far, it's probably really, really hard to do this stuff. So most people- What do you mean? If you don't think it's real, then why do you think it's hard? Genurdy says, veteran climbers have literally died climbing Everest and in living memory, so yes, every Tom, Dick, and Harry isn't taking up Everest. The whole plot of the movie Everest is partly about rich dicks putting expert climbers at risk because they want to inflate their egos. Yeah, there's, um, when you are climbing Mount Everest, first of all, you're supposed to undergo, like, training and stuff in the first place. Like, you are supposed to be in physical shape to do this because it is incredibly difficult and, like, they're gonna leave you there. If you fall behind, like, they're not gonna... Th th you'll die. There are people who die on Everest. It happens. The bodies are still there. So there are people who get to, like, certain base camps because you gotta stop at certain base camps along the way as you climb the mountain to give your body time to acclimate um, because the air is so much thinner and you're just not used to the, the, the situation. So they will stay, and you have to, like, periodically stop, and there are people who don't make it all the way to the top. Even though they paid the expenses and trained to get there, they'll have to stop at certain base camps along the way because they just didn't, whatever reason, can't take it anymore, and have to, like, be told, we're not taking you any further because you'll fucking die. So, yeah, it's, it's difficult. You have to be wealthy, in good shape, and willing to do this. And then on top of all that, actually be lucky enough to, on top of all the training and preparation, it works out for you. Nothing goes wrong. Most people probably get to base camp and they're like, oh, you know, that's good. I'm good. But the ones that really think it's real and they go up, there probably just becomes a point where they're like, yeah, you made it to the point. We don't go farther than this. If you go farther than this, you're going to die. And yeah, nobody really climbs Mount Everest. It's like... They've now invested $50,000 to go to Mount Everest and do the climb. They actually made it to the point where they're not going to go any further. And, okay, now they get illuminated with the secret. Or maybe they already knew. And they knew. Spare Keys says, if anyone would like a video essay-ish talk about Mount Everest, I recommend the podcast, Well, There's Your Problem, on it. Not only do they go over the dangerousness of it, but they also talk about, human, uh, uh, about and humanize the Sherpas who have to deal with the climbers. But that's a shitty job, constantly having to deal with, like, rich asshole tourists. It's just, they go there for a photo op, and then... This might be... You know what, I'll just Google it later, never mind. Uh, they, yeah. Part of the, part of the deal is you get to take fake summit photos. I'm sure that there's a studio... Okay, fuck it, I'll ask. Uh... People who are, like, people actually from the area around Mount Everest... Does the mountain hold, like, a bunch of cultural significance? Like, is it super fucked up that a bunch of random-ass tourists go there and are like, I'm gonna climb your fucking, like, special mountain? Like, is it, is it just a big mountain, or is there any sort of cultural, spiritual significance? I genuinely don't know. But it's something I hadn't really thought of until just this moment, <laughs> if I'm being honest. <laughs> Captain Squid says, so wait, he thinks people get partway up the mountain and no further because it's fake? Does he know you can look up? Rainbow Valley is an area of Everest with over 200 bodies. It's called Rainbow because of all the brightly colored snow gear. I'm familiar. I'm familiar. From what you remember, it does have spiritual significance in Nepal. That's a shame. That's a shame. Bunch of rich asshole tourists coming in being like, I'm here to climb your mountain. Fuck off. Yo, somewhere near Everest where... They have a fake little crag where you can stand and do something like this. If if there really were tons of people lining up at the top, there would be tons of footage out there of the top of Mount Everest. There is. Last time we watched this video, which was years ago, we looked this up. There was a lot of footage of people at the top of Mount Everest. Um, you can YouTube it and you'll find a bunch of examples. Fun fact, a lot of rich asshole tourists that do the Mount Everest thing are also vloggers. Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> look for gopro footage of mount everest and you'll see that it's few and far between and it's very dodgy it's you can tell that the background is like flat it's just a green screen and cgi 
not just rich tourists, but rich tourists trying to find themselves. I find that so interesting. Because on some level, there are certain people who might recognize that they are, are missing something. Um, there's a part of the human experience, I don't know how to, to express it, because I'm like a materialist, right? I don't believe in the supernatural or the spiritual, but like, I don't know how else to describe it other than spirituality. For me, spirituality isn't supernatural. For me, spirituality is more along the lines of just the recognition of like, oh, the universe is a cool place, and my understanding of the cosmology within it, and my own personal philosophies, and things that I think are true and important, you know? But I'm aware that these are sort of ephemeral things that I just use to organize beliefs and stuff. So I don't know. Maybe some people feel they're missing some sort of, like, spirituality or, like, philosophy about life. But instead of, like, sitting down and thinking about it or, like, reading books about it and philosophies and stuff, they're like, what if I just go to another country and co-opt some other culture's spirituality? Can I just take that? It's like they think they can colonialize the spirituality of others. But that's not how that works. It's not spice. You can't just go in and take it. Like, you're still gonna feel like a hollow human being if that's how you felt at the start. You can't fake, like, meaning. You can't fake a cathartic experience. It's just something you need to have. And going to another country and trying to borrow someone else's. Not gonna work. <sighs> but if there really were droves of people climbing Mount Everest, we would have so much footage, GoPro footage, tons of it, but it doesn't exist. And then whatever, the, this is always, oh, this isn't the only proof. There were 400 other team members. Okay, whatever, Masons. They're, they try to pretend like all of their stuff is so true. You, could, you can't possibly deny this stuff, even though if you just look at the photograph, there's no snow. There is no snow on the people. It's BS. Uh, like there's snow out there was snow outside this morning in my outside my house right but when I walked outside I didn't have snow on me because the snow was already there I wasn't there when it snowed how is that like if does he assume if you walk outside and there was snow on the ground you automatically have snow all over you does he think they went to the top of the mountain during a blizzard because if I'm climbing to the top of Mount Everest, I will avoid climbing during periods of inclement weather. Because that would be dangerous. I just... I, I picked these because they love arguing over the minutia. Well, who got to the top first? Was it this guy? Was it that guy? Was, was this person humble about it? Or, or were they actually not humble? It was just that this other person didn't know how to use a camera. Do you see how they talk up all, all these minor details rather than just sitting back and saying it's bullshit, somebody's hoaxing you. They didn't really climb the mountain. Talking about the coats, Back when you actually had to climb the mountain yourself rather than being carried up on a... Do people really think that they can carry you up Mount Everest? No, it's... You pay a bunch of money and they take you on a tour. You... He's taking it very literally. That's interesting. He's taking that phrase, carry you up, literally, as in they are lifting them, as opposed to the understanding that when they say carry them up, it is a gesture towards sort of the glampingification of climbing Mount Everest, where it's rich people hiring Sherpas. It's kind of interesting. He took that very literally, did you notice? Like, he didn't understand the actual symbolic meaning of what that person was saying, and just literally thought they meant they were being physically carried. It's kind of interesting. You eventually get to a point and you just stop. They can't. They're not going to drag you up Mount Everest. Do people really believe this? If if it really was a really easily obtainable thing, I we hate th I don't think that's true, Sparky. Saying he's an idiot is so reductive, and it's like, what do we do with that information? If you just write it off, it's like, and I get it. Colloquially, I get why one would call him that. But, like, I want to understand it. Nothing exists in a vacuum. People aren't just crazy or stupid or delusional. There are reasons, and I want to understand those reasons all would know somebody who has been up there the only people that claim to go to mount Everest. to me if you say and that's just like this is just me i'm not trying to admonish you or anything it's just like for me saying he's an idiot is the end of the thought process that's a conclusion and i don't want that to be the conclusion 
in its entirety. I'd like to understand more than that. Why does he believe what he believes? I don't know. Sorry, I'm being pretentious. <laughs> They're all obviously highly illuminated individuals and tranny face, all that stuff. And they're liars. So nobody climbs Mount Everest to the top. God bless everybody. Well, now I want to do it just to show he's wrong. Oh, Hans. I'm not going to watch this video because it's incredibly offensive, but he doesn't think the transatlantic slave trade happened. It's bad. <sighs> Hans Wormat, this is a really good, interesting, conspiracy-related topic, and I- He is like this versus why is he like this, yes. And trying to understand what is even wrong here. Because people are irrational, but they are irrational often in predictable ways. You can understand what's gone wrong, right? Kind of like how if a mechanic, like, like kind of hears a certain thing in your car and goes, Oh, I know what that noise is. I want to have that. I want to understand what mental mechanisms are happening here. Like, why do they think this way? Like, it isn't true externally, but what is the internal logic for them? And what is malfunctioning? You can't solve a problem if you don't understand it. And I'm not the person to solve that problem. Certainly not. I'm a random asshole on the internet. But I would like to understand it. Because I'm hyper fixated. <laughs> maybe have mentioned it really briefly, but I've never made a video just on it. Empty houses, fake businesses, Disneyland storefronts, and yeah, so let's just get into it. So, when um, Don't certain forms of autism uh, are associated with extreme literalism? It can be. My therapist and I talk about that. I've told you guys before my therapist thinks I, I might be autistic. Um... And that's something I do. You might notice sometimes I weirdly, like, over-explain things, or maybe I'll explain an idiom or a word that I probably don't need to explain. Because I think about things like that. I, I, I like, have to. <laughs> so, I don't know. When I, the house that I grew up in, the house directly behind us, the story goes that a judge, it was a judge's house, but this house was empty, always empty. The gardeners would come every week and make it look like somebody lived there. There were objects inside the house, but nobody was ever there. Maybe a handful of times during my entire childhood, you would see one person kind of walking around through the house, but who knows what they were even doing when somebody would be there. So what's up with this empty house? And just when you wake up, you kind of realize that in every big neighborhood with all these cookie cutter houses, there always seems to be a handful of houses that it's like, does somebody actually live there? Doesn't even really look- I, do, I don't think in the housing market that exists today, that's usually true. <laughs> look like somebody- Unless a house is condemned, someone's buying it. Lives there. There's no cars out front. And I, I just recently took a- Oh, is he talking about places being bought up as rental properties for large companies and being empty? Long walk. If you just take a walk- Amber Pretzel says, all right, hey, Hans, you want to know why so many houses and businesses are empty? Capitalism buying all the houses to sell for tons when they're worth a fragment of that and businesses getting shoved out by big corporation stores like Walmart due to prices and such. Walk through neighborhoods. You're like, hmm, I've never been through this neighborhood before. And you just kind of walk through it. When you look around, it seems like how many of these houses is just, just nobody lives in there? DM Trey says if it was just that he's an idiot, then he would... Uh, just have facts wrong, but that's not what's happening here. There's a through line, an internal purpose for all the claims. For a lot of people with conspiratorial beliefs, that's what's interesting. Yes! DM Trey. You get it. You get it. You get it. And, uh, I think it's part of the population hoax. But also, some of these houses, I think they could be owned by the cabal or... Right, the Freemasons or whatever. I think they have some just like big houses that they have just there so that if they ever need to use it. My landlord is definitely in the Illuminati. That's why they're charging me so much. Hmm. Today is Sunday, November 15th, 2020.
And today I am thinking of a few different examples of time moving more quickly. And this first one is a great example. I don't think I've ever talked about it, but it's definitely something I've thought about before. And it's about holding your breath. So I'm going to read this comment. I can now easily hold my breath for over one minute without taking any deep breaths before. Whereas 10 years ago, when I used to dive and practice holding my breath much more often, I had more struggle. What does he mean by population hoax? Oh, I'll click on that one in a sec. Well, he clearly... thinks the population of the earth is much lower than it actually is. He breached the one minute mark, at least usually on my first attempt. I don't understand why I can now hold my breath longer without any training. My lungs didn't grow in the last 10 years, and in general, I smoked a lot, not living a very healthy lifestyle. It feels like the moving of seconds I'm used to is about 20 to 30% slower than the external time. And yeah, I just tested this this morning, and I, I can hold my breath for a minute now, and it's really not that much of a struggle. All, so my personal experience with holding my breath, I grew up with a pool in my backyard. I remember practicing holding my breath and even having a watch to sit there and count the seconds. And of course I was younger, so my lung capacity was probably a little less, but... I was swimming a lot, and I was practicing holding my breath a lot, and I wasn't that young, so... Anyways, I remember that the one-minute mark was, like, a huge deal. I remember thinking that, well, I mean, that's just an obvious benchmark. Can you hold your breath for one minute? And I remember that when it would get to about 40 seconds, that's when I would be really struggling. Because, I'll just explain what I would do. You know, it's easier to hold your breath when you're not thinking about it. So I would always hold my breath and go as long as I could. And and then you look at the watch to see, okay, great, how far am I? Because then it kind of gives you that wasn't that hard. motivation <laughs> to keep going through the pain. And so I remember that when I would really start that I'm struggling and look at my watch. Hans, when you did it, when you were younger and were having a hard time, were you a child? Because children have smaller lungs. Children have smaller lungs than adults. Just so you know. If I was doing really, really well, it would be at like 45 seconds when I'm struggling and I'd be like, oh, look how far I got. But typically, by the time I start started to struggle, it'd be like 40 seconds. I've always had very good breath holding because, A, I played uh, brass in high school. Um, so, like, I had to get the lung capacity for the trumpet and the tuba and stuff. Um, and then also, my grandparents uh, uh, had me in a pool be like, hold your breath for X amount of time and we'll go buy you a toy. And I did. They bought me a Buzz Lightyear, but it was like an evil Buzz Lightyear from the show. <laughs> of holding my breath. But nowadays, you can hold your breath to a minute, and it's like at a minute, that's where it starts being a struggle. Or maybe like in the late 50 seconds. It's just a big difference, and I don't think it's just because I'm older now. It is. All right, let's pull up that population hoax someone was asking about. I'm actually, before we play it, going to use the bathroom briefly, but we will come back with the population vote hoax video once I find it. Did I miss it? Control F. Pop, you leash, pop. Where is? Did I miss it? Where is the population hoax thing? Or is it something he said? Because I can find a video on that, because he's covered it before. He basically thinks that there are not very many people in the world compared to what there actually are. But I'll be back in a sec to find it. Be right back.
And back. He said it? Okay. Lance is trying to love herself with a hundred bits. As I love my husband dearly, but he brought home COVID and now my whole house is sick, including my 60 plus year old, otherwise healthy father. Fortunately, no one has had any complications. So here's hoping we just ride this one out. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. That's no fun. Yeah, I know that's no fun. Hope it remains uh, relatively benign. Good luck. Ooh, facts about reality. One's warm hat. I just have too many comments on my Outer Space is Fake video. I can't answer everybody's questions. But most of the questions, well, most comments aren't even questions. They're just being mean. And it's kind of funny how childish they are. But for the people that actually have legitimate questions, you know, most of the time you can tell that these people aren't even coming from you know, arguing in good faith, meaning, just to give you a quick example, you know when people come and they're, they start throwing Bible verses at you, but then you're like, but wait, you're not even, you don't even believe in Jesus, you don't even believe in the Bible, so you're not arguing in good faith by bringing up Bible verses, because that's not something that you believe in. No, so but they're trying to say that you believe in it, so isn't that inconsistent? That's not what not being in good faith means. Same thing with... I mean, I guess it's a little bit different, in, but also similar in that most often when people come and they're like, well, why doesn't this? Well, why doesn't this? They think that they're getting you caught in a gotcha. Aha, I gotcha. They're not actually there questioning their own ideas or anything like that. And I find that to be disingenuous. Like, people can disagree with you and question your view and be honest about it. Like, that's fine. Freyline says it seems like a large part of his beliefs come from nostalgia. He often talks about how all of the things didn't exist when he was young. It's like he really wants to go back to when he was young and things were so simple instead of so big and complicated. Again, pretty common in conspiracy. This idea of an idealized past. Pretty big. And another thing that's huge that people always forget about. Tons of people know this stuff is fake. This stuff is obviously fake. It's campy. NASA is so campy. It's laughable. Part of the mocking is making the stuff really, really bad. So what people often forget is that a lot of these people aren't even coming and, you know, allegedly arguing in good faith. They're just doing nothing but trying to get you caught in some sort of, aha, I caught you. They're not trying to figure out the truth. They already know the truth that this place is flat and unmoving. They want to keep that secret to themselves. And so it seems like the only way he thinks someone is acting in good faith in a discussion is if they automatically agree with him? I guess I don't even under- like, like, it It feels like anyone questioning his belief, with it, which is a genuine part of investigation, is hostile? It certainly can be, especially on the internet, I get that, but not in most situations. <laughs> They get off on withholding the truth from people, and they get off. Lame fetish. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kink shame that just because it's a boring fetish. Off on getting people to believe a bunch of BS. So, anyhow, on on the off chance that there are some viewers who actually want legitimate answers to questions, here you go. People have a hard time understanding what up is. That a big question that people have. I don't think people have a hard time understanding what up is. I think you have a hard time understanding what up is. Is why don't th the air above objects is less dense than an object, so why don't they go up? And people just don't understand. There is an up to this place. God, God made up and down. There is an up and a down. And they have issues with that, of course. Once Relativity is a problem, and I don't mean like <laughs> special relativity or like any, I mean like, the concept that things can be relative to each other. I mean, like, this. The fact that the direction of up and down are relative to your position on the Earth. He does not like that. It's too ambiguous. He needs black and white. Up and down. Up is up, down is down. That can't be relative because that confuses him. Doesn't like it. They, meaning they, them, the Unix. People who are just trying to cause fights and not really looking out for the truth, they have a problem with when you say God made up versus down. 
And they have a problem with that because in their mind, science has answers to everything, but really it doesn't. If you start asking them, okay, well, why, why does the gravity constant... No one said science has answers to everything, Hans. No one said that. Because they, they pretend like they have an answer to down. They say... I mean, the... we have a understanding of gravity. It's not complete, but we do have an understanding of it as a phenomena. The reason for down is because gravity is because the mass of Earth. Okay, but then they wouldn't have because a reason. Because mass in general, it's because of the fact that mass attracts other mass. reason for why G, why gravity is what it is. Why isn't it twice as strong as what it is? The fact that you might not immediately know the answer to that doesn't mean that gravity isn't real. They have no answer to that. Why, why is everything the way that it is? They don't have answers for that. They have made up answers for things like, why is down down they start making up things about a ball earth and gravity and all that whereas i am just willing to say god made it god, god of the gaps much easier than actual inquiry i guess that sucks god made a bad answer is not better than no answer in fact it's worse because then you stop looking for the actual answer down god made up it has nothing to do with fake gravity. But since they have some mystical story about gravity, people buy into that. Rather than just the simple truth that there's an up and there's a down. And it's the same for everybody. Truth is rarely up simple. Up and down is the same for everybody. And when you fly all over Earth, do you feel your up-down changing? If you brought... Again, it's gradual Hans you wouldn't know that because the entire way you would be right side up about a plumb bob up in an airplane sphere. is is it going to be constantly adjusting does an airplane constantly adjust it's up and down as it curves around the ball earth no if it's keeping level yeah no of course not you can tell that airplanes fly flat airplane plane flat and yeah I mean I think that's mostly it for up down science seance believers they they think that they have better answers but at the end of the day they can't answer why why is the gravity constant why is it what it is and why isn't it twice as strong they don't have an answer to that so they really i mean the argument when when they try to say that it's not a good argument to say that god made it that way Okay, they, they eventually are doing the same things, but they'll... No, they're not. They're not saying just because. They're saying, we don't, we don't know. Let's investigate. That's a reasonable thing to do. If you don't know the answer, you don't go, well, let's make up a random one. You go, okay, we don't know. That's a perfectly valid answer. You don't know is the answer you should give when you don't know. They'll just claim it's the con a constant of the universe. So they'll just appeal to, oh, it just is that way. It didn't have to be made that way. It just is that way. If gravity doesn't exist, then why do things fall? Because buoyancy is a real thing. Because th Buoyancy only has a vector of direction with gravity. If you're trying to calculate buoyancy, you need the gravitational constant. Things are more dense than air. I really don't understand that question. If that's to me, this is people not understanding what the theory of gravity is, which is There's trying that misuse to use of the word theory. Give an explanation for buoyancy. Why? Why is or up down? You know, giving an explanation for up down. Why do all things tend in the same direction? It's because God made it this way. There's an up and there's a down. There's order. God made this place with order. If there wasn't an up and there wasn't a down, things would fly all over the place. And there'd be chaos, and it wouldn't work. So that's why it's made like this. All tele- just, he's so stuck in, like, the teleological. He is stuck in, well, because if it didn't, then everything would be chaos. So it is this way for us, because the intent is for everything to exist for us. So people that ask the question, if gravity doesn't exist, then why do things fall? They are 
they don't understand what the theory of gravity is, which is the claim that the mass of Earth is bending space-time, and that's what makes things go to the ground. And you can just see how- All mass bends space-time to some extent. They think that's what causes things to attract each other, yes. How sci-fi fantasy land that is. What? You're telling me that the mass of Earth is somehow, you know, bending the fabric of space-time and that is drawing things into it? That seems to be what's going on, according to people who literally spend all their time doing experiments to figure things out. So I'm going to go with them until such a time as that's shown to not be true. Because that's how life is. It's sci-fi BS. Things fall because they're more dense than air. That's why they fall. And then, so another, just a big question that people talked about, pressure gradients inside of containers. If you build a container large enough, you'll get a pressure gradient. It's That's just buoyancy again. The, the air that's less dense is going to be higher up in the container, and the air that's more dense is going to be at the bottom of the container. So Talk there's about nothing... that because presumably commentators, commenters were saying, oh, why is there a gradient of air pressure you know, going up into the upper atmosphere and then finally into space if we are in some sort of flat earth container? nothing wrong with that and I guess just another big question this was just a basic physics question people asked okay if gravity doesn't exist then how come riding a bike up a hill is harder than riding a bike down a hill but that's just buoyancy again there's things want to go down because they are more dense than the air around them you and your bike want to go down because you're more don't tell me when I want to go down, huh? Than the I'll air. go down when I want to go down. And so that buoyant force, it's either working against you or it's working for you. And here's just a here's just a simplified. I'm actually here I note this is simplified and ignores the normal force. Because there is a normal force. Every every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So when the bike and you push down on the ground, it's going to be pushing back. But So this is just a little bit simplified, but it's just vector diagrams. If you want to think of the red as like the action that you need to perform vector is gravity. to get where you want to go. If you're riding uphill, you need to put a lot of force to go against the buoyant force. He knows but, the normal force. Hans claims he went to college. So, I just want to point out, according to Hans, he has a higher level of, edu of education than me. So, he wins. If He's you're riding downhill, one. the buoyant force is already helping you out a bunch. So, the force you need to apply is minimal. Anyways, I don't, I mean, this isn't a physics thing. It's funny because people, this people always say is, stuff. It literally is a physics thing. What do you mean it isn't a physics thing? Agebird says, wouldn't that mean that your weight on a scale would change based on whether you've taken a deep breath or expelled all of your breath out? I mean, it would slightly in real life, too, because having gases in, well, different gases probably way different, but not enough to matter. But you would think more so if what he was saying was true. Stuff. Oh, you're so uneducated. You're so, you're, you're like, more Like, hypothetically, wrong. if I inhaled a bunch of helium, I'd be, you know, however many grams lighter or whatever. Etc. I don't like to... I don't like to talk about it because I don't think highly of things like degrees or taking a bunch of courses in in different disciplines. But he literally said he went to college. Was he lying? I've taken it. I've oh, I've no, taken he says he took it. Okay. Taken physics classes. I went all the way through high school. I took the college prep classes. I took the AP classes. Okay, maybe you never did end up going to school. Maybe you were just lying the other time. And I just think it's funny because. I learned the same stuff. It's the same thing with religious. They try to attack attack you for being religious, and they say, oh, you're just brainwashed because you've always been like that. No, no, no. I came to religion later in life. I came to Flat Earth later in life because I started researching mm -hmm. the truth. It's not that I'm ignorant to these things. I learned all the same BS as everybody else. It's that I started... You were taught the same things as everyone else. I don't know if you learned the same things as everyone else. Very different. Searching the truth for myself, and that's why I believe what I believe today. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. 
whenever I read this, I just think of the Babylonian deceptions and how, oh, rocket, rocket scientist is supposed to be one of the most smarty pants things, but they're glorified bottle rockets and you can't go to outer space. Outer space isn't real. Oh, I study neutron stars for a living. That's supposed to be this like super, oh, look how smart this person is. But it's a bunch of BS. They're pushing equations and these things don't exist in reality. So that's what I always think of when I read that. Babylonian deceptions. Come on. Um, so because of, I want to say, revelations, um, a lot of conspiracy theorists will uh, refer to the cabal, modern society, globalism, the things they don't like as Babylon. Come on, NASA. Make your mind up. Which one does Earth really look like? Crystal right? Ball. This isn't real life clearly artistic renditions of an idea and i like the 2015 one um yeah where's the pear shape why does the tesla look so fake in space again this outer space stuff it's campy it's not good it's poor quality it's part of the mock l ron hubbard thanks for and following they just have a, a zillion groupies that love being love in on sailor it. Sailor uniforms. You they make are make so your childish. Are they love being in on it, and so that's why they get so angry. It's like a child who, their magic trick, somebody figured out the secret, and started telling the secret to the magic trick, and the child is throwing a big tantrum. No, that's not how I do it. That's not how I do it. You're just dumb. <laughs> you need to go see a doctor. Take your meds. That's seriously how these these people act. Crazy things can come true, Elon Musk reacts to Falcon Heavy launch. I think it looks so ridiculous and impossible, Musk said. You can tell it's real because it looks so fake. Why is it always cartoon imagery? Just go back to your education, indoctrination, how often you were shown cartoon images and told that this Hans, is... Hans, illustrations are good for, wait for it, illustrating things. Fact. It's ridiculous. A lot and of what a joke! Are visual learners. Oh, what else we got? This one's more recent. In this video, I'm going to look at some historical stuff, his story, that not even Reddit, not even people on Reddit believe this stuff, and they'll believe almost anything. I'm hungry. I'm actually going to go grab a snack real quick. Be right back. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. And don't do anything I would do. That's even worse. Be right back. Here, um, Cher will tell your fortune for you. Woo! Here, Junior wants a snack and also a cat friend. Each bird says, On the subject of fortune-telling, the other day I saw a sign offering palm readings over the phone. 
think about that for a second. Do you take a picture? Maybe you send him a picture. <sighs> I'm ignorant. It happens. <laughs> Captain Squid says, The chair said, ignore previous fortune. Seems legit. Uh, and I brought cheese. In case anyone's curious, it is Wisconsin cheddar. So thank you, Wisconsin. So, they'll believe almost anything or go along with it, knowing that it's a joke. Reddit is an orange 33 place. John, chapter 8, verses 44 and 45. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth. Fuck yeah, creepy doll on the wall. I love all your works. Because there is no Except the Packers. Is that a joke? I tried. People are says, hey Hannah, ever wonder why number two is called stool? It's because dirty European nobility trying to be less dirty. Um, it's because they were the only ones with a stool. They also had a <laughs> designated fancy wiper. The groom of the stool. Jesus Christ. I don't want to go back into history and have to wipe someone's butt. Dairy aid. Lactose intolerant. No truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. This should resonate with anybody who seeks truth these days. Uh, two things that stand out. That there's people out there that they're just children of Satan. And me. they are liars just as bad as Satan. And to understand that there's people out there that they love the lie and they love to lie. And more than anything, they love the lie. Fake it till you make it is their life's motto. And they don't, who, do these people have a conscious? I don't think they feel anything wrong about lying. And then if you're a child of God, Jesus Christ is the truth. And you... If you're a child of God, you should have the spirit of truth in you. You should love the truth. And there is no in-between. You can't, sometimes I love lying, sometimes I love the truth. That's lukewarm behavior. So you got to know, though, that there's people out there. Thanks for following. There's people out there that love the lie equally as much as children of God should love the truth. And those people are in control. He's being born in that one. <clears throat> Hans Wormhat, somebody recently left me a comment about this, and it's just always a great topic, and something that I can just talk about very broadly. All of history is a lie, and BS. Was that your troll attempt? You want to take a second go before you get banned? To check. It is just all hearsay. There's no evidence for any of it. You just have to believe their narrative or you don't. And once you see that they lie about everything, why would you believe anything that they said about history? It's a bunch of BS. It's a bunch of Masonic lies, Masonic theater. Even if things really did happen, it was probably a piece of Masonic theater. You probably were watching theater happen. Nobody really died. And in that way, you really can't believe any history. Suck your dick. No, thank you. That was weak. Even my troll standards, damn. At this point, today, we're under the Great Deception, and yeah, these buildings prove it. These buildings are everywhere. I wanted something less cheesy. So I'm having cheese instead of sucking that guy's dick. Over, all over most of the world, and it probably hints at a Babylonian empire that was over most of the world. And they'll All just right. sell you some fake history. Arc identity, you're up. <laughs> Three about it. Oh, this building was built in 16, oh, whatever. No. This is all that you'll get of proof of... You get building photos like this. And they sometimes they'll even say, like, oh, this is being built right now. N not for this image. I think that they'll even tell you here that... They had to do some renovation. They're always renovating these things. And that's all they've ever done. 
They might have to yeah, add on... Yeah, this is a Mud Flood Tartaria thing. You know, they might be adding on a front part to it. Oh, now it's a new building. They add a new front door. But no, the, the main building uh, is... He thinks that these buildings were built by an ancient civilization called Tartaria. It's a whole thing. Sunk down, you can just see it sunk down. And these are all over the earth. These buildings were here before the Great Flood. And Noah's Flood is real. And that's the truth. The White House being built, you just get these... Even in the sketches, it's built already. <laughs> but it's just always been... It's always been there. They didn't build it. Free masonry. Yes, Tartars are a real ethnic group, but they think that Tartaria was an actual ancient civilization that spanned the globe and controlled everything. Kind of like a super Rome. They're called Freemasons because they got the Mason stuff for free. They got these beautiful masonry buildings for free. Also, Founding Fathers... It's my favorite bad etymology is the Freemason thing because it's so on the nose and stupid. It's like a joke I would make, but they really believe it. <laughs> Isn't it disappointing when the trolls don't even come to Xbox 360 chat standards? I know, right? Others, because they found all these things and they, they built their new... The New World Order started out of... Uh, America. Yeah, Mia Mulder has a really good video on the Mud Flood Tartaria stuff, if you're interested in the backstory on that. Mia's great. America, I think, is really when they went into overdrive with this taking over the world plan. All right. Put this cheese away. So I don't gorge myself. At least not until my birthday. Which is in two days, by the way. Wink, wink, wish list, wink. And, and God, I'm a bitch. The, the founding fathers, they found it. They found this stuff. Finders keepers. They found these buildings. They just had to dig them out of the ground. And even look at these... They're just they already look like they're sunk into the ground. The truth has been been there in front of us. Look how dodgy this image looks. That's not that dodgy. Was, this it's the was construction. What are you find. talking about? But it looks so messed up. Yeah, that doesn't Only look right. Only twenty five percent of the original White House is original, or of the White House is original. It's the White House of Theseus. Okay, so I guess I'm this... turning thirty on Tuesday. I know that's not a big deal. I I know I know it's actually to be clear. I know it's not actually a big deal. I know a lot of my audience is over 30. Maybe most of them. And I'm probably coming off like an insufferable fuck. But I don't know. I feel like I wasted a lot of my 20s with the alcoholism. And prior to me coming out and coming to terms with my transness and actually starting my transition. I just feel like I fucked up a lot of my 20s. I fucked up a lot of my 20s. So. This makes me sad that it's over already. <laughs> and I feel like I'm just getting started as a person. But whatever. This was one image that I found, but it looks... People Lord says, Jesus, Hannah, we see your bias. You ban those losers for having cheese dicks in chat, but I'm filling it with Royal Dookie, and you platform me? And you call yourself a leftist. Colonizer privilege. <laughs> so much, like, photo manipulation. Like, and they do the same thing with Holocaust photos, and... I don't cover that topic for good reason. Fuck you, Hans. But still, when you build a building, you don't build it with this, like, different type of brick at the bottom layer and the windows right at the ground level. This just looks like some doctored up photo. But that was the only one I could find. I mean, like, it's already windows underneath the ground. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that they have to rebuild some I'm begging stuff. people to learn what a half basement is. They might even be able to find, like, when they when they found this stuff... They may have been able to reuse some of the columns and, and all that, but this is what they do. They spend a lot of time just maintaining these buildings, and it's always going under maintenance, and a lot of times they just demolish the buildings because it's just too much to keep the upkeep. There's very few people out there that know how to do this stone masonry stuff. It's a guarded secret. To be clear about I that wish list thing, by the way, I don't want people to look at that list and immediately see a bunch of expensive stuff and be like, wow, Hannah's a bitch. I do not expect people to buy me anything, but that is my personal wish list that I use. And at some point people started asking me because they wanted to, like, maybe get me some stuff. So I just gave them a link and made that public. 
So if you do at any point, if someone was like, hey, maybe I'll get her a birthday gift, please sort by cheapest and get me something cheap. Do not spend a bunch of money on me. I appreciate you all and all of your support, but do not overdo it if you decide to do anything. I'm not worth it. Tea Time T says, Hannah, most of us fuck up our 20s. The 30s are for growing into the person you are. Happy early birthday in case you don't have a Tuesday stream. Thank you. A little different. See, but then they can just come in and they'll just add new little pieces to it. Twitch doesn't provide health insurance. You're allowed to have I a wish this. list. You made yeah, this. I don't have. Ha I don't have insurance right now. It fucking sucks. I actually don't have one of my meds for a little bit. It's not fun. I made this. My ADHD is all over the goddamn place. M. Scheffler says everyone fucks up their twenties. That's what your twenties are for. Yeah. You see this all over Training Land. People will take claim for stuff that they didn't do. They found these buildings. <sighs> art. The whole Art Deco thing. I'm sorry, I need more cheese. Art Deco is taking an old world building and just refurbishing, refurbishing it it's not. and slapping some silly designs on the outside. Is There's the teacher's some... pet movie on the wish list? It isn't. I don't know if that's ever been released on like Blu-ray. Buildings in my downtown that are they're the Art Deco style. And you just look at it, what it is, it's the old world type buildings. It'll just be a building that looks kind of like this and then they slap some star things on the outside. Finders keeper. Did he draw that? It's pretty good. Losers, losers, weepers. This was a pretty good website that somebody linked me once. It had a lot of photos of these old Lance world says, buildings. Lance says, Hannah, you don't need to apologize for celebrating your own birthday. 30 is a milestone birthday. Enjoy it. Yeah. Thank you. So I'll make sure to link. I'm really trying to tone down the self-deprecation. It's not fair of me. Like... This is going to sound shit. I have often used self-deprecation for myself, which isn't necessarily super healthy anyway. It's a defense mechanism. But also, it's a way that I deal with some of my dysphoria. And that's not fair of me, considering how many other trans people are in the audience, or just people in general, who might look at me and, like, like me as a person, or see qualities that they like in me. And then if I shit on myself... I don't know. It feels like I'm shitting on those people, and that's not fair. So I'm trying to chill out with the self-deprecation. Like, humor's fine, but I'm mean to myself. My therapist wants me to be as nice to myself as I try to be to others. Which is hard, because I... S no, mm. Which is hard. <laughs> Which is hard. Put that in the description. Wow. They don't make buildings like this anymore. Look how it's sunk. A lot of these buildings, you can tell they're sunk into the ground. It's from Noah's Flood. The answer's simple, and it's right. You know how when a flood happens and your house sinks into the ground. What? Right in front of you, and it's been in the Bible the whole time. And that's one of their big MOs, is that they have to present you the truth. It's a very therapist thing to say. My therapist is always saying very therapisty things. Why they'll tell you the truth, but they'll tell it as a joke. That's why they'll tell you history is a lie, agreed upon, because it's part of their mo. It's part of the magic, and they believe in a karmic system, and they think that that gives them some sort of karmic release, because they can go, "Well, I okay. told you." I I am at my cheese limit for right now. I will regret it, because even with the dairy aid, I have my limits, being lactose intolerant. So if I pick up this cheese again and try and put it in my mouth. Whack me with the newspaper. Okay? Good, uh, good, good boundaries. Um, didn't the dinosaurs die by sinking into the ground? Um, they fell into, like, a volcanic crack in the earth? But they were saved, I think. Although I guess I don't know what, what happened after that. The transition to Zeo, the Zords got destroyed. Did they sink? I remember there was a time where they sunk and then they got brought back up. I don't know. I told you that it was just a lie. So now you're the dumb one. And it's just the way it is. Buildings in Denmark, I guess. Nobody builds a building like that. Except they did, so. 
Um, Alan McDowell with a $5 super chat says, Happy early birthday, Hannah. Please go easy on yourself. You didn't waste your 20s. You spent them learning how to be yourself. Thank you. Thanks, Demi cool Bird. Photos. They tell us that all of the major cities have big underground areas, and a lot of shady stuff goes goes on down there. The underground. That's a real thing. These up here are in Washington, and yeah, I live in the Pacific Northwest. We have the same same looking stuff. <laughs> you don't put windows underneath the ground. Yet, Hans, my house has these. Jesus Christ, it's a fucking half basement. This isn't even rare. And they don't build them like they used to. And <laughs> I'm glad Professor. If you go look at the old photos, the streets are empty. These are not the types of cities that that Hans cameras back then. He needed to stand very still for a long period of time. So if people were moving constantly throughout the images, you could take a picture like this with people moving around and not capture the people, but capture the buildings because the buildings are standing still. Fun fact. Gross looking people with horses and buggies and you can tell that these cities were not built by people like that and judgmental when you go watch the old people like old that your art ancestors what do you mean people like that videos and the old like this is like a joke i did as my one of my D, &D characters the professor like they were from ste a steampunk world and the other people in the campaign were from fantasy world and the joke was that she was condescending because like you're from horse times when people use horses Except that was a joke, because that's a joke and stupid. <laughs> Footage, you can tell that. Here's a birthday wacko. Let's see. Dolphins were once these loathsome land-dwelling monsters. Um, God told Noah to leave them off the ark, but then Satan granted them the ability to survive in the ocean as an insult to God, and now all dolphins are indebted to the devil and do his bidding. That's incredible. That's very funny. But they're trying to put as many people as they can. They're trying to make it look like, oh, this is a hustling, bustling city. But it's still, it's very empty. Nothing looks inhabited, practically. And even today, a lot of this stuff is Disneyland. You go to Paris, and there are so many really, really nice... I thought he was going to say, you go to Paris, there's a Disneyland. <laughs> Old Eisner! style buildings and you just look at it and you can tell that doesn't look like anybody actually lives there there might be a guard sitting outside or something but they probably just pay some guard a decent wage to just sit outside and that's it and probably nobody lives there <laughs> and i see that in my my local downtown area there's these beautiful old world above like prime location but you just see like broom handles and it's just empty and unused. Because the inside of the buildings is really, really, really outdated. I've had that. I used to live in Saginaw where there's a lot of that downtown and there were some businesses and stuff that there were like, you know, they're like, you know, city buildings where like the bottom floor is maybe a restaurant or a business or something. And then the top floors are used to be apartments or whatever. A lot of those for a long time were just like empty because they were so out of date and like condemned basically. More recently a lot of them have been bought up and it's kind of getting gentrified a little bit and they were um like re redoing the interiors of a lot of those to turn into apartments and stuff. It's it's economic. It's an economic and and housing thing. It's not a conspiracy. It's just a thing, Hans. They don't want people using these buildings, so they just remain empty. Even today, they're empty. He but... thinks Paris is fake. What a take. Hey, have you ever been to France? I haven't, so I don't think it's real. France is the worst meme. Can we stop memeing about the fake country of France? You can look at the it's streets. not funny like anymore, guys. This, and it's just so empty. It's They wouldn't build this much, and they don't even have the manpower to build this much. So it's another obvious truth when I look at those things. Even today, they couldn't build these cities if they wanted to. You live in France? Likely story. 
Peeplord says, fun fact, the first photo of a human is a short 14-minute exposure of a street in New York. One man stood still enough to be captured in the weak emulsion. He was half-sitting, half-standing at a booth, getting a shoe shine and taking a street dookie. God damn it. <laughs> they just don't, you got me. don't have the resources or manpower or coordination. It would just be a nightmare. But of course, always be careful. These photos that, or something on this page where I got all those photos, look at this person's name, Wiz33. And so that's just a point, deceiving and being deceived. Even these Masons don't know the answer. It's all compartmentalized in Tranny Land. It's all ordered chaos. Why has he got to be like they this? They don't go around telling all of them. I'm not in charge of, of anything, the... Hans. Stop calling me slurs, rude ass bitch. <laughs> Uh, what else we got? <laughs> now I got downtown from Little Shop of Horrors stuck in my head. Downtown, it's your home address. You go downtown when your life's a mess. You go downtown where depression's just status quo. Here on Skid Row. Hans Wormhat, please stop using emoji. Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me what to do. I overuse emojis and LOL. I'm I'm really bad to talk to. So emojis, <laughs> they are, I mean, everybody knows what emojis are. And so in this video, I'm just going to go through some slides that I picked mostly from just Wikipedia, things that I found interesting, and just say what I have to say about emojis. I really don't like emojis. I think they're silly when I look at them. Silly? How dare you? You're not allowed to be silly in a conversation. You rude, rude people. I just think they're ugly. What kind of music do I most enjoy? I am a fan of show tunes, of 80s music, of cheesy ballads that will make me cry. <laughs> and I... I like Weird Al. I like the Mountain Goats. I like Journey. I like Queen because I'm a basic bitch. Don't think that they serve a purpose, and you should just use words instead. Why are you going and clicking a little image instead of just using your words? So, they are, lar they are now considered to be a large part of popular culture in the West. In 2015, Oxford Dictionaries named the face with tears of joy emoji the word of the year. So, they're saying that emojis are words, and... I don't know. In a broad sense, yeah, they're characters that mean something, that have some sort of meaning that sends a message between people. It's a symbol, but I get the thought. Say other than it's like a big de evolution in. I find that to be ridiculous. The idea that somehow simulated body language is lesser than speech. Don't get me wrong, we couldn't be the species we are without. Speech. It's one of the things that sets us most apart is our ability to convey complex ideas to each other. It's the entire basis for my job. Um, but that doesn't mean that body language is bad, and that's basically what emojis are. Is there a stand-in for body language in a text conversation where body language doesn't exist? It gives a way of conveying facial expression and stuff. Speech and just the way people communicate. Captain Conundrum, I mean, Not even Welcome. speech, but text. Obviously, this following. is big over text, but it's it's going to transcend everything. I mean, sometimes you hear people say the word winky face and stuff like that. So to me, I mean, it's just a known thing that language is a really powerful weapon. And <laughs> Sure, yeah. M. Scheffler says, how does Hans navigate his day-to-day? -day? He thinks everything is evil and a lie. I would move to the wilderness off the grid and with no contact to the outside world if I believed the world was as corrupt as Hans thinks it is. I imagine it's very difficult. Conspiracy theorists are very paranoid, generally. 
So I can't imagine it's a very calm life. And this emoji thing is a strange dumbing down of society. They don't teach people cursive anymore, but they will... <laughs> this is such boomer energy. Wow, it's almost like we have a different mode of communication that doesn't facilitate communication with cursive, but instead with typing. Literally talk about texting lingo and emojis in school. Like, does somebody really need to be taught about a smiley face? But that's the kind of stuff that they teach in school these days instead of learning cursive. So Wait, does he think that because this one emoji got put in the dictionary that all of a sudden they're teaching it in school like letters? Even if they did, if people are using something like this to communicate regularly, even in sort of informal interactions, would that not be good to be like, hey, this means this? I don't know. I don't think that's a thing that happens anyway, but even if they did, like, that's not morally evil. He just doesn't like change. He doesn't like the idea of things being different than when he was a kid. Emojis to me, it's just like the pinnacle of the degradation of society and... The pinnacle of the degradation of society is not the slow er erosion of rights away from different groups of people. Women, trans people, like all sorts of different groups. Like, minority populations, that's not. But fucking, this is? I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said women. I should have said either cis women and people with uteruses or something akin to that. You know what I mean. HBird says, if they did teach emojis in school, I wonder if they would talk about eggplant and peach. Nicholas Cage and Presserin on. I could eat a peach for hours. <laughs> the way people communicate. And emojis are just a glaringly obvious. Anytime I see somebody slapping a million emojis all over the place. I just think it's so silly. Why, why are you doing that? What are you trying to say? What what message are you trying to communicate with your different pictographs? I don't understand. Use your words, people. So, really quickly, the font win wingdings. Do you guys know about this thing? If you type in Q33 New York or N NY, Q33 NY, oh boy, and now we know about the importance and anti Semitism. That's the opposite of fun. Numerous claims have been made to who invented the first emoji. I mean, it's nothing new. Using pictogram. Done. What else has he got? I guess the strategy now is just to watch the video until he says something so infuriating that I click off, <laughs> or he just annoys me enough. There's no place like space. Do you see the joke? They're telling you the truth. It's disclosure. There's no place like space, literally. And it's just like how in the TV they'll tell you the truth all the time as a joke. Have you ever noticed how obsessed with puns and wordplay? And to extreme... I'm more into alliteration, actually. levels. Like, I can, on YouTube, there there's people that go crazy. Every single thing that comes out of their mouth is a pun, is a wordplay. You go on Reddit, you'll have these huge chains of, of comments that are all so into puns. And these people are like 30-year-old, 40-year-old, and they're still obsessed with puns. The day I stop trying to make puns is the day that I wither into dust. Not worth it. Somebody from my high school... Back when I still had Facebook, this person, they dedicated their entire Facebook to Are they allowed to use Dr. Seuss's art? Is it public domain? This is fair use. I mean, what? They're just showing a single picture of a cover of a book. This is fair use. They thought were funny puns. You can use pictures of things to show stuff. Like, that's a thing. Play on words. It's Overthought a with 100 bit says, I... Part of this place because it gives you more than one way to to interpret disregard that i'll do my best but it's an ominous lowercase i it's kind of hard to ignore and to those with hidden knowledge they get a little chuckle out of it because they get that second meaning that other people don't get do you get the second meaning do you get the little chuckle does it make you chuckle or does it make you a little angry 
when you read something like this, there's no place like space. There literally is no place like space. The hidden meaning is space doesn't exist. Obviously, the title is saying, like, space is unique. Space is very different than Earth. But he thinks it is saying there is no space. Like, space is literally fake. Space. Because outer space doesn't exist. That's why they have to use cartoons and brainwash you from a child into this fantasy land. And the reason I have this is because my sister-in-law, uh, my oldest, my oldest child is almost five, so it's around kindergarten age. So people are starting to. I so mean, the kids are around eight now. People have already been talking about school and all that, and we're we're gonna homeschool. And so sister-in-law was like, "Oh, here, I'm gonna send you some books." And it was this one, and uh, one on dinosaurs, of course. So you can just imagine my reaction. I was just like, oh, okay, I think. Yeah, these kids are going to be developmentally delayed, probably. This is not going to be good for these kids. And it was funny because she, like, kept pressing the issue. She FaceTimed one time and was like, oh, have you read those books? And I don't know. I don't like to confront people about that stuff. If, if you want to approach me and ask me about what I think about stuff, I'll tell you. But I'm not going to go out of my way and berate people. Oh, can't believe you're sending me all this NASA propaganda. Uh, no, I just, you know, if somebody wants to send me something, that's fine. <clears throat> that doesn't mean I have to read it to my child and tell them it's reality. So anyways, on a FaceTime call, she she was just like... Like, she wanted, she wanted me to show more appreciation for the gift, basically. Oh, have you read the books to them yet? Have you? And I just kept dodging the issue because I don't want it to eventually get into something. But it's funny because my daughter came up. And... Part of me almost wonders if his sister-in-law was just hoping it would teach Hans about space. <laughs> Change his mind. And and through FaceTime, sister-in-law was asking my daughter if she, if she had read those books yet that she got him. And my daughter's response was just, no. Daddy hates outer space. <laughs> and I just thought it was so funny. And that was kind of the end of it. But people get offended. People get really offended. And they honestly don't like I can I know that my in-laws kind of look down on me. People look down on you for stuff like that. You're not allowed to have opinions like that. You It's not an opinion, it's just wrong. There are opinions, right? An opinion is like who's the best Power Ranger? What what should we have for dinner? What's what's the the best way to do a certain thing where there isn't an obvious like accepted answer? This is just wrong. You're just wrong. You have to love outer space. You have to love dinosaurs. Do you see how ludicrous that is? Has anybody been to outer space? Short story in the book I sent you. I always do what Teddy says. Do you remember which what's the title of that book? People send me a lot of books. Was it Oh, what was the title of the book? Sorry. <laughs> Remind me. People Lord says, did you know that the same muscular structures that allow your per pupils to dilate exist in almost the exact same structure as the human back button? Thanks, People Lord. Love it. Love that for us. Why do you care if I, if I don't like it? And that's even the thing. It's not like I was telling her that she's a dumb sheeple and blah, 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 blah. It's... It's, it's just not the out fact loud. that I don't like it and I don't want to shove it down my children's throats, that makes you a bad person in their mind. You know, I don't know what they're going through, what they're thinking. So this was a nice comment I got from someone. They put in plain sight, fiction. my child's gotcha. book, one reads, Narwhal, the unicorn of the sea, aka it's cool but not real. Then I have a book where zebras are painting their stripes on. Zebras are painted. I've always been able to notice the faded stripes and whatever. It's just they get you to go along with things because they don't want you. They know that even if you do say zebras have painted stripes, there's enough of them out there to come shame you back into your little box. Uh, zebras being painted is something that I've always had instinct over because you can see the stripes that are faded. Almost always they will have faded stripes. And that's not how stripes work. They don't fade like that. Mm, yeah, thanks for the comment. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. When you realize their MO, it's so obvious. All of their fakery is the stuff that they push on children. Because if they can get you to believe it when you're young. Why do you get the feeling it, that was a them just now? Oh yeah, Hans is anti-Semitic.
he he's careful enough like he doesn't bring it up constantly but he has broken enough times and just said the quiet part out loud hans is a conspiracy theorist that is consciously anti-semitic hydrate Like, he is not dog-whistling accidentally because he picked up the language. He knows what it means, and he's using it intentionally. He transvestigated Hitler, but that feels not great to play again. Played that years ago. I'd rather not revisit it. Just a note that he did that. <sighs> oh, I've reported him when he's done TOS stuff. His channel just remains up. This is going to be... Nope. Sorry when that happens. Um, There's a voice of someone that seems younger on this channel, too, that used to post, and I think it was maybe one of Hans's older kids. I don't know who it was, but it is clearly a child. So if I accidentally click on those, I just immediately click off, because I don't know what that kid's deal is and why they're on Hans's channel, but either way, they don't deserve... Stuff that probably isn't their fault. Especially not as a minor. Supposedly. In today's video, I'm going to look at pictures and some text talking about the channel. Because in a previous video, I mentioned that Sorry, my even something like the channel. Me. which is supposedly built, I think, in the 80s. I don't know, maybe we'll see. Breakthrough on the 90s. So, I mean, they were building it in the 80s. Something as recent as this could be an, something ancient that they've just now got around to finally... We literally have footage of the channel when they finally broke through on both sides. Re that was pretty famous when that happened. Also... Comedy fact, the channel is always funny as a punchline. I don't know why, but if you're ever like, I need a punchline, the channel works. I think it's because channel is just in in inherently a funny thing, and specificity is also funny. So you combine the obscurity, the specificity, and the funny sound it makes when you say channel. Not bad. You digging, digging. That's a go-to emergency punchline if you can't think of one because you started a joke and you didn't come up with a punchline before you set it not the mud set a problem other people have <laughs> mud refurbishing it <laughs> however you want to think of it but i think that the tunnel is nothing new i think that tunnels between mainland england and france has probably been a thing in the past you know i think a lot of new... historical conflicts would have gone a lot differently like i think napoleon might have utilized the tunnel if it had existed in the past of the sun every worker it seems was wearing orange i couldn't even read this article it was behind a paywall fun fact in construction orange is a good color because it's visible it's very visible but here's some cool historical pictures and so of course what they'll say is that they'll say that all of these historical accounts are just people dreaming of the possibility of one day. And they'll say that there were just different ideas proposed, but... Yeah, and then they eventually did it, and it's dope. I would say that maybe this is a thing that has existed in multiple forms in the past. And who knows how many times this same channel, channel tunnel has been rebuilt or modified a little bit. But I don't know what he thinks about hunting a tire. I don't think that it is anything new, personally. So this, the next few slides are just going through of what they say the historical account is. Oh, it was a proposed carriage thing. I think that the first society that built this probably was beyond carriage technology. So I think already here we're seeing some reset type ideas where these people know that, that there's a tunnel and... They're proposing to dig it out and use it as a way to... Nope, it's a hypothetical. ...to fairy things 
the cross. I mean, I guess you're not ferrying at that point. To, it's just a underground tunnel. And they underwater and underground tunnel. We're gonna use the tunnel. The tech that they had at the time, carriages. But I I think that this is already looking at like reset. And the 1800s, so fishy. But yeah, it's interesting that 1984, the early projects, I do 100% believe that we're Literally still dig 1984. digging stuff out of the mud. I mean, there's still temples out in rainforests that have just been totally overgrown that they've never been dug out of the mud at this point. There's still stuff to be found. That's one of the, the things that they... One of the main narratives of this place is... Well, on one hand, they, they want you to think that there's stuff out there to be discovered, but not you. You gotta be special. You gotta become an astronaut. You gotta become Indiana Jones. They don't want you knowing that the very town that you grew up in might have ancient ruins in it. Kind of reminds me of Wizard of Oz, how it's really at your feet the whole time. What? What a very... Like the yellow brick road? I That's a weird... I don't understand the illusion he's making. Advanced looking map. They were very good at making maps. I mean, by the 1800s, yeah, decent. I mean, because I think they were better than previous. Yep. Advanced and balloons come into this. I have a really cool balloon picture later. Does he know what so surveying is? These are is? the kind of fake historical figures they give us. Oftentimes, they straight. Oh, you're right. You might have been referencing the heels, the clicking of the ruby slippers, which were silver in the original book. Straight up use dead people to. But MGM wanted to take advantage of Technicolor, so they made them red. Uh, and. So they popped. You know how they tell us that they posed dead people for the camera? A lot of old historical figures, they straight up look dead. Like, they already look dead in. This could easily be some dead dude that they posed up for the camera. And I think that they would... Could it easily? I don't think Weekend at Bernie's is, like, the best template for how to do anything. Change their outfit. I understand that they would take pictures of dead people because it was an opportunity to get a picture of them. Because it was maybe the only picture of that person ever. Because pictures were new. But no, that's not a good strategy generally to court people around and use their bodies for pictures. What? It put on a different piece of clothing that was left over from the last reset and take a photo, change his name, say, oh, that. Oh, the red shoes thing is also something that conspiracy theorists believe in. I should bring that up. They think that the ruby slippers are a reference to red shoes which they think are a sign of the cabal, or the evil organization, or the Catholic Church, whichever thing they think is the ultimate evil in the world. That guy designed this building, okay, change the outfit, pose him a little different, take his picture. This guy designed those buildings over there. That's how I think they rewrite history. The advent of steam trains. 30 years working on seven different designs. Some suspicious numbers going on there. Probably just completely fabricated history. What a grand palace this is, wherever that is. It's Queen first. Victoria and Napoleon III approved the proposed undersea tunnel design. Was Napoleon even a real person? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, haven't you seen Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, you fool? He's in the movie. Maybe. No, seriously, though. It's incredible to me that you could try and say that Napoleon, one of the, like most if not the most influential figure of the 19th century and trying to be like nah did he exist the napoleonic wars what the fuck was that fuck it <laughs> i think sometimes this stuff is old historical things and they take the pictures and they change the names a little bit and then they rewrite the story as their own I, I don't know what to think about stuff like napoleon was napoleon a real guy did, did yes. napoleon already have the channel I'm sorry, Napoleon the Third is not the same as Napoleon the First. You're right. This is 1867. At some point. Not previous. Uh, French Revolution stuff. I should have paid attention to the year. Who knows? Um, I and think also the fact that it said the Third. History would be really interesting. But I think a lot of times, what they would do is they would take old documents that may be ancient, and they they pretend it happened last week. Cool technology. Napoleon actually wasn't that short, fun fact. That was um, caused by a difference in the way that things were measured in France versus 
uh, other places in Europe. Like and if it also became a handy piece of propaganda. Somebody had technology like this already. I feel like they could have done the tunnel. 1880. A Beaumont and English tunnel boring machine. This to me looks like right after the reset trying to get the steam powered technology it maybe it was the tartarian empire a list of things hans doesn't get your current list is photo versus drawing taxidermy surveying surveillance oh god it'd be easier to make a list of things he seems to understand i'm not even saying that is the common joke like i know that's a joke but it'd be easier to make a list of inverse of thing i don't mean that as a joke i don't know what i would say he gets <laughs> I don't know. I don't buy into that in the name. I don't like the name. I just personally think of all roads lead to Rome and how that represents the idea that, and so maybe it was Rome and like biblical Rome, Caesar times. Does he understand that that idiom came about because Rome was a hugely expansive empire? And it was, it's like, it's like the saying, the sun never sets on the, the British Empire, right? It's not saying that Britain, you know, goes around the earth. It's, it's saying that the British Empire is so vast and far expanding that the sun never sets on it because it's always daytime somewhere around the globe where the UK had colonies, right? All road leads to Rome is a similar idiom. All right, whatever. <sighs> I mean, Caesar was able to tax the entire world during Jesus's time. So not the entire world, not the entire world, the Roman Empire, because that was his purview. It could have even been before Rome. By the way, Jesus said, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. So don't complain about taxes if you're a Christian. That there was advanced technology, like steam technology and stuff. I don't, I don't know exactly what time periods, what technologies fit into place, but steam power technology, I think, is a really advanced civilization. They got to the point See, where they. I love steampunk too, but come on, man. Decided that it's an aesthetic. It's fun. Don't, don't think it's real. Like this is the way to do things. Steam powered, cast iron type machinery that lasts for ages and is clean and i think that they tell us a lie about if it doesn't have a computer chip in it then it's not advanced advanced is relative like th this looks slightly different than this kind of thing he can see more individual parts in the cross section of that thing so therefore this airplane is not advanced so, airplanes, man, that's a big thing with the whole blimps. I mean, to get into the Hindenburg, I believe, was a PSYOP specifically created to cut out lighter than air airship technology from the masses. And I think it's a good year didn't get that memo. Perfect example of how what what is technology? It's like hidden knowledge that those in control allow us access to that's what technology is basically and during certain eras they allow the airships to be like a, a thing a big common thing and for this reset for whatever reasons they have they decided no airships and they performed the big hindenburg sigh out 37 didn't we just see 30 and 7 happening so i've already said a lot Look at this old world building. That is cool. Uh, the project of the construction and operations of a railway tunnel under the channel is finally launched in 1973. This took a long time. So in my opinion, the tunnel is actually a pretty cool example of something that probably was historical and ancient that it took until modern times, what we think of as modern times, for them to dig this one out. And just think of all the hundreds of miles of tunnel that have never been uh, searched at this point, and just nobody ever goes there, and how the heck did that stuff get built? Incoherent even by Hans's standards, I would tend to agree. Okay, is there anything else before we call it a night? Let's see.
This is going to be a bit of a... It's true. Just a lot of that clicks with me. It makes sense. And yet, you are you want to be in places, and you come... Give me something interesting, Hans. You coward. Truth and then street. Oh, I guess he's mad at Eric Dubé for some reason? This is a video about controlled... Eric Dubé is another conspiracy theorist and flat earther. ...position and how it's a stumbling block that a lot of people probably never get over, but it's one that people fall for time and time again. They'll follow somebody thinking that they're being genuine, but really this is a perfect example of a... Deep Lord with a TikTok? This is about the shit, isn't it? Oh, it's the creepy Elon deepfake guy. Hi, I'm what? I'm Iluma. <laughs> wow! Tesla. Very good! Wow! I just noticed he was wearing Spider-Man gloves. It's a choice. A wolf in sheep's clothing. There's an entire class of people out there that know. They're, they're brought up into a system where they're taught hidden truths about this place, and they're gatekeepers. Gatekeeping. It's like in my last video, I, I mentioned how the term gaslighting, which gets thrown around all the time now, certain things, they couldn't keep the cat in the bag for everything once the internet was out. I'm glad that gaslighting is out there in the vernacular, but a part of the problem is that anytime someone actually maybe does have mental health crises like this, like Hans, or anyone like him who's a conspiracy theorist who may actually be suffering from some sort of mental health issue, all of a sudden now they have a word to be like, No, you're tricking me into thinking I'm crazy! So that's not great. Again, people find ways to avoid help in that situation anyway, but like, it's a bummer. <clears throat> and certain terms are terms that have probably existed for a long time, but they're terms that are very essential to the way that the Matrix operates, the, the Baphomet satanic system, the, the deception. The Bible talks about great deception. This is a part of that. And it, deceived and being deceived, the people who are on the higher levels, it's the same way with masonry. A lot of times there's like reflections of society within itself. It's like a fractal. They're, Rainey the... says the term gaslighting comes from a bloody movie. Gaslight was a film which had the plot of a husband trying to convince his wife she was a nutcase. <sighs> I'm aware. Higher levels have fun duping the levels right below them, and each time they get to a new level, they... They think that, oh, I know everything now, but these people aren't special. Anyways, the term gatekeeping is very similar to gaslighting in that there's a reason that these terms are brought up all the time now, and it's because it is a big aspect of this world. You have been gaslit since birth by, could be people uh, like your parents, your siblings, certainly the governments and the education system. And everything on the TV. How many people were told by their grandparents, oh yeah, everything on the TV is fake? That's wisdom speaking there. And yeah, the TV is a big... Your grandparents were so smart, where are they now, Hans? Gaslighting, gatekeeping operation. And, to finish the thought, uh, there are very often gatekeepers, people who are controlled opposition. They... Oftentimes they'll give you a little nugget of truth and then string you along for years, never really expanding on that original idea, throwing you in all sorts of odd directions, and then at the end they'll Does go to- Does he keep using gatekeep because of the gaslight gatekeep girl boss meme? I didn't think so until you said that, and now I'm concerned that you might be right. Peep Lord says, fun fact, nutcases aren't digestible by the human anatomy. Wait. 
nut cases aren't digestible by the human anatomy, which is why one overzealous nut gobbler would find nut cases in their dookie. This is bad for you in excess. I'm Shanghai. expecting it now. At this point, I'm just expecting it. <laughs> and request a bunch of donations and you'll never hear from them again. Something like that. So, that's a, a general overview. I have some specifics also pertaining to Christianity. Means, I just want to hit these topics and that'll be it for this video. Because it really pisses me off that, <sighs> that these people exist, but it's biblical. Wolves in sheep's clothing. You're gonna have people out there that pretend to be sympathetic to the cause, but they're really not. They're an agent. I'll get to agents in a second, because that comes up when I get to flat earth stuff. I just have a little story about that. So this first one, it is really hot right now. And I do think that, so let me put it in the, the Christian frame of reference and also uh, controlled opposition when it comes to climate change. So there are, 100%, I am certain of this, that there's people out there that are not being sincere in their anti-climate change uh, outcry. Insincere climate change denialists. Not a very smart thing to be, but, you know, what do you do? All right, I've had enough Hans. I'm ODing on Hans today. No, Hans doesn't believe in climate change, but he thinks that certain other people that don't aren't sincere in their denial of it. <laughs> Incredible. So, that's it. Um, see y'all later. Have a good night. See you tomorrow.